What's up, everybody? This is Brody, Charlie, and Tudong Dylan from the Talk Talk Punch YouTube channel and podcast, where we talk movies, do lists, rankings, and more, and you are about to listen to the Keeping Up with the Cardassians podcast. Enjoy! Hey, hey, hey. Welcome to Keeping Up with the Cardassians, your source for all baseball cap related news. From oh, the, there's, there's plenty. From trucker hats to what other snapback hat caps. To stretch hats. To stretch hats. To fitted caps. Beanies. To beanies. And more. Welcome, anyways. This is Nick. This is Rob. This is Joe. And uh, this, you know, this is Keeping Up with the Cardassians, and we don't really talk about hats, but we talk about pop culture news, including movies, TV shows, music, video games, comics, toys, and so much more. Are you saying we never talk? We would never talk about yeah, hats? That's, no, it, that's not true. But we we'll don't talk about anything. We don't specialize. We don't specialize in that. We specialize more in in those other things. Do you remember for the like the two week period where we specialized in stamps? <laughs> that was a yeah. great. What Did was you the know name I of your podcast? Two thousand stamps downstairs. <laughs> what was what me. was the name of your podcast? The tramp tramp stamp or tramp stamp tramp stamp of the podcast. And it was it was. Do you remember the podcast idea? It was literally we would just Google. Oh yeah, people different, who, different, different people yeah. who had tramp stamps, and and yeah, and we would review rate, them. We'd, yes, we review their tramp stamps. Though that and we would really, also have sta- actually actual stamp related news. That's more of like a YouTube show though, because you have to show them yeah. what the stamp is, right? I mean, you can't yeah. just talk about. I mean, though it would be fun to sit here and describe the stamps <laughs> to people. It, it begins on the dimples of the lower back, but uh-huh. the dimples aren't really there because let's just say the BMI index is fairly <laughs> high. <laughs> Which would be mine. That would be mine. Um, so, anyways, we are reviewing uh, Battlestar Galactica season four, and we're nearing the end of the series. Today, we have two episodes to review. We're going to review them as one, though, because they're essentially one full episode. Um, it's the Oath and Blood on the Scales, and we'll go into that in the second part of the episode. And Joe's going to tell us of his love for Gata. So I cannot mm, wait. Loves him. I cannot wait to hear how much he loves Gata. I might read my text to you guys last night. Uh, verbatim. You're going to have to read it <laughs> verbatim. Uh, but before we get into that, there is some news we want to catch up on. And should we start off with the end of physical media as we know it? I mean, since you brought it up, sure. I mean, <laughs> so Best Buy. Just, no, actually, let's hold that for late. No, just kidding. Yeah. Best Buy just announced the other day that uh, they are going to stop selling physical media like Blu-ray, DVD, and 4K Ultra HDs in store and online, and online, and online. That drop that blows my mind. The yeah. online part shocked yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's the part that really like in store. I kind of get mm-hmm. I, for at least for Best Buy. Yeah, but online, that's that's the crazy. part. Well, and from looking at this article, it says that. In the Blu-ray field and in the physical media field, Walmart has a 45% market share for that. So 45% of all physical media comes from Walmart. Oh, wow. So then you factor in Target and you factor in Meyer and, you know, those kinds of places. Amazon. What share does Amazon have then? You would think they would have like the 45. I don't yeah. think they would, though. Because but if you're going people, to Amazon, just not, stream. Just, yeah, you're, you're probably streaming. either buying it, yeah. renting it, or streaming it. Yeah, exactly. Amazon. So, I mean, that's a pretty big hit. Um in the first six months of 2023, there was a 28% drop in physical products sold compared to the same time in 2022. So that's the first six months. So you know that number is going to be even more the second half, too. So, I mean, physical media, people are people are off the off the ship. People are idiots. I, especially if you throw in that's 4K. Oh, 4K, I, you know, that's my thing. Well, I think to me, part of my issue... Is that, you know, I buy these movies on DVD and then it's like, well, then I have to get the Blu-ray because the quality is better. Then I have to get the 4K because the quality is even better. I wonder if with streaming or if buying that, you can just have access to all, like if in the future it comes out with another one, you can just upgrade it for two ninety nine instead of buying a whole new copy. Maybe in the future. Not uh, right now. But still nothing compares to watching a 4K movie on disc versus the internet. 
quality wise, quality wise, quality wise, sound, not, sound wise, sound and visual, mm-hmm. visual especially. Well, sound actually, I would make the bigger argument for because sound, uh, they, the way they compress that sound you're not getting true surround sound if you have that whole system in your living room which i have like dolby atmos in mind so like i wouldn't i don't get that when i when i have the streaming videos which is kind of a bummer um but you know what's also a bummer getting up and putting a disc into the drive got to be the laziest thing i've ever heard you know what actually it's been kind of great though because the first three seasons of battlestar galactica i just watched through peacock uh, and now season four, as you know, they took it off. Um. They took it off Peacock, so we had to switch to Blu-ray, which is kind of suck. But at the same time, there's no commercials, and I can easily fast forward without an ad popping up or anything. So that's pretty amazing. I'm sure it looks pretty good too. Oh, it looks it looks well. I mean, actually, solid. I, solid. It looks doesn't look as good as you think. It's grainy because well, that was the way they yeah. recorded it. No, they recorded it actually on digital film. They recorded it on digital film, but it intentionally has the. The, oh, like, they did that on purpose. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, because it was meant to look like there's like a crew following them, almost in some shape or form. I, I just, as you know, Rob and I are huge proponents of physical media, and <clears throat> I just, I, 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 it blows my mind how quickly it it changed from physical media dominant to. Everybody just, we're going to stream everything all the time, including music. Like, I don't know. It's just, it's sad. It, you know, it's really sad. I w- I, it, do I you will. think Best Buy could have, do, do you think, what I was thinking of is their business model. Do you think they misstepped anywhere or is it just inevitable that they were going inevitable. to? Well, they got rid of CDs a long time ago. So this was inevitable after that happened. Which is funny because they got rid of CDs, but now they're slowly bringing in vinyls. <laughs> if you yeah. go there, they have vinyl music. Not a huge selection. They shouldn't be allowed to, because they because yeah. they bailed on it at some yep. point in time. That should be grounded. From this <laughs> well, they they're a bandwagon fan. Yeah. I don't think they were around when vinyl was a thing, like a big thing. Yeah, because vinyl in the '90s in the United States, vinyl was dead. In the 2000s, really, it was kind of dead too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, it's to the mass it. public. Do you know this year was the first year that vinyl sales have outpaced CD sales? And uh, no, I, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Pretty pretty cool. Pretty cool. I uh, I love. I have a, I haven't really bought a CD in a long time, but the, I've, the quality I've, isn't as good. No, but there are. I've I've bought CDs for some of my favorite artists who I want. That's exactly what I do with CDs. If, yeah. If Tool yeah. comes out with a CD, you're gonna get it. Plus, it's gonna be this crazy thing. Yeah, I'm gonna buy that. So I I'm an exclu. I've gone completely over into the streaming game now, and uh, you know I have a Spotify family account which we stream everything through. And I will say one of the so there's there's pros and cons to it. First of all, right now with Spotify, the quality isn't as good. They're adding a high high audio option, so it'll be better. Um, which will probably be an upcharge. Probably. The other con is the artists do not get as big of a cut. You know they get pennies on the dollar versus what they used to get. But the pro is. I can listen to Tool, and then it says, here are some artists that are similar to Tool that pop up, and I can click and on that they artist. they lie. Every time they recommend an artist for anything I'm listening to, I'm like, nothing like that band. So I think Spotify's not bad at it, actually. I found some really good artists that way. Mm. Yeah, I have. And, or like when they have a curated list based off your reading uh, ha- or listening habits, here's a playlist for you. And it has a lot of the artists you already listened to, but it has some new ones. And all of a sudden, I'm like, oh. Amazon this is Apple now one of my favorite. Terrible artists. at it. Would Would either of you rather read a physical book or like a Kindle or iPad? Physical. It, it's physical now. It used to be Kindle and stuff like that, but there's something about so the feel of again it. flip flopper. Yeah, because you have you have vinyl. You yeah. have some vinyl. I, oh, I have quite. I my, I mean, I don't have a ton. I only started collecting vinyl what three years ago mm-hmm. is when I started, and I have two hundred some albums right now. I got like four. Uh-huh. And that's because Joe gave me one. I go to the record yeah, yeah, store yeah. every week because my son has uh, guitar lessons and at Rock City. Yeah. So I just go and peruse the Stay away from there. the RR records. I know. I know. There's not many left, <laughs> actually. Well, I mean, there There's, still is, but it's not as yeah. many as it used to be. So yeah. they've, they've cleared out. I'm looking for, uh, right now, I'm I'm looking for. I'm still bummed you gave him that Julian Blowfish album, too. I'm bummed I gave him every album I did. Oh, man. Yeah, I get that. 
I get that. I I would think that if you give someone something, uh, and they decide at some point, well, I'm going to sell my whole collection, they should give you back what you had given them, or at least, or at least you, I, give you the option to buy it back. Yes, that be, what you just said is what I would. I wouldn't expect if I give some. I don't expect anything back that I give. If I give something, it's a gift. It's yours. So if yeah. I give you herpes, that's a gift. It's mine. Yeah, okay. It's a gift that keeps on giving. Too. I know, so I can get it back then. Oh, you will get it back. Oh, fair enough. Herpes is like the pyramid scheme. You can just give it to another person oh, well, who gives it to two more people. I mean, when you give it, you don't. It's not like you're giving you. You're, it's like propagating a plant. You're yeah. still keeping part of that plant. <laughs> exactly. Like you're just, <laughs> I'm just keeping it out there. You're just making more plants. You got the Rob mix of herpes. <laughs> Remix. <laughs> Remix. So, anyways, physical media is dead. I <laughs> long live physical media. I prefer physical. Uh, other than, I don't even really count like TV because TV has never been like a physical thing, right? It was for there was like a five year period where DVD sales for for TV series were huge. But huge. I'm, I mean, I don't even mean that. I mean like actually watching TV. Oh yeah, you're right. Because I still have, I I still have like all my f- favorite TV series on DVD, which I will I will watch. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't. I don't generally go to, I don't watch a lot of streaming programming like um, anything that like Netflix or Hulu or at least streaming. I watch a lot of live TV yeah. through, I have, I now I have mainly, YouTube TV, but I, I, wa- I watch a lot of. Got that YouTube TV I'm money. Ma- I'm mainly streaming at this point. But Jeez. other, other than that, other than that. I go both ways. Other than well, that I do. movie, yeah. I would rather, I, I'd rather go to a theater than stream a movie. Same. Yep. But I will, I'd say beyond that, if I, a movie is probably 50 50 between streaming it and purchasing it. When it comes to music, it's, it's, I use Spotify as a, um, as a gateway to music that I would like to purchase. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Or when I'm in my car, because cars have abandoned CD players as well. So it's either radio or Apple CarPlay or just where you put on Spotify and stuff like that. Um, you know, actually, if it wasn't for Spotify, I wouldn't enjoy Chris Stapleton. Chris Spotify is what got me into Chris Stapleton. Then I went out and bought a bunch of his vinyl records. I like, you know, yeah. and, you know, Spotify was where when you recommended Sturgill Simpson to me, I started listening on Spotify and I'm like, this is good. And then I went and bought the vinyl records. So, so. Yeah, that's that's what I use it for. It's like, OK, this is a it's a it's harmless monetarily to yeah. explore music and find stuff you like. But once I do, I'm like, OK, I want to. Yeah. I want to purchase that. But I'll still listen to it. Like, I'll buy, you know, Foo Fighters is my favorite band. I own all their records on vinyl. But I'll still put it on Spotify sometimes oh, if yeah. I don't want to. You know, like, I'll, you know, get their playlist going, which they're having a stadium tour coming soon to Michigan. Um, so, I'll, you know, I'll still use both sources. Um, but you were mentioning streaming and uh, Netflix. There's some other streaming news related to Netflix that came out as well. Mm. Related to Star Trek. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Go on. So, so Netflix has come through and saved Star Trek Prodigy. Star Trek Prodigy, yeah, if you we don't just remember, talking about it, was on, it was on Paramount for two seasons. And uh, all of a sudden, they decided, Paramount decided, hey, we hate Star Trek again, and canceled everything, essentially, or, or just stopped caring about most of their content. And uh, Prodigy was one of those. Did I love Prodigy? No. Did you watch it? Yeah, I watched a couple episodes. Oh, did you? It's a kid show. Mm-hmm. Um, I watched a, a couple episodes. It's a decent kid show. Just to check it out. It's decent. It's a good kid show. Um, it should not have been canceled. But again, this is where streaming gets dangerous. It's super easy for them to bail on a show very yep. quickly in streaming. Mm-hmm. It's also very easy for them to get lost in streaming. Because there's so much content. Yeah, they... It's so hard to keep up with. To me, Prodigy always felt like a Netflix original programming. Like Star it Trek Netflix did. original, yeah, it did. It did. It never, I mean, it, it. Part of it is it is that it's aimed towards a younger audience, but it never really had the quality that I come to expect from a Star Trek franchise. Even even uh, Lower Decks is. It feels like a, It feels like Star Trek property, yeah, especially this season. Whereas mm-hmm. Prodigy always felt to me like. A Nickelodeon show, kind of, but like it, almost like a Netflix original, like animated show. Yeah, it does. It does. So I think 
I think that's a proper landing place for it. Well, not only are they bringing it back for that third season, but I think they renewed it for a fourth. Did they? I didn't hear that. I, I just, thought I remember seeing that. I thought they were just bringing it back for that second season that was already made. Oh, no, second and third season they're bringing it back for. Okay. So they're going to make another one. Oh, I thought, were they giving Paramount the double bird then? Like, boom, we're going to take it, and boom, we're renewing it for another season. Yeah, In of. your face. Kind of, kind of, yeah. So Paramount, that's Paramount has been absolute dog shit at, They're at, flakes at, right now. Ma- at managing Star Trek yep. properties. Well, just, I mean, all these. Where, wasn't uh, there a while where the movies weren't even on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They went off and on and off. When and we on. were trying to watch yeah. them, and it's not like they lost the rights to them. They're paramount for the love of God. Like that—that yeah. that always blew my mind. Like, how can you have a huge property like Star Trek under your? It's not like you lost the rights to stream them or or anything. See that? <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's uh, it's not for the weak. Give it ah! here. <laughs> Sorry, I was just sniffing some glue. Literally. Uh, Rubber cement was sitting here, and I just went in for a whiff. Well, Holy gonna, cow, that hits you. You can't go deep. That's you're gonna hey. burn. You're gonna burn your lungs. <laughs> I think I did. You I gotta, think I have COPD now. <laughs> oh dear. I'm, you gotta be. I have emphysema. <gasps> All right. Sorry, guys. Sorry. Sorry, listeners. You can't. You can't just adapt my my pre-show drug routine. No, I can't. I can't. <laughs> Sorry for interrupting you, but uh, no, it's. It yeah. just it just always blew my mind how Paramount Plus and oh. Paramount how Paramount s- treated Star Trek as like this second rate franchise with movies and it, it's just like put all put all the material on Paramount. Yeah, yeah. Well, I would. This goes back to uh, and this kind of will segue into the next topic I wanted to bring up for you guys, um, but I think this goes to oversaturation as well. You know, I think again. So they Paramount created this grand vision. Okay, we have Strange New Worlds, we have Discovery, we have Picard Season 3, we have Lower Decks, we have Star Trek Prodigy. Five great properties. One of them, I would say, isn't as great. But, like, five properties that they could go off with. Um, and instead of saying, let's space this all out, they're like, nope, let's put it all on the air at the exact same time. Yeah. So they kind of created their own issue in some sense. And then now they have to dial it back, and and that's what creates the outrage. If you just spaced it out, fans probably would have been fine. But they put everything all out at once, and it ruins the media. So, but- I, I mean, I don't think there's any point to make against that. It completely oversaturated and that's what's happened with marvel that's what's happened with dc and that's that segs into my next that's what ha- that's what that's the world up. we live in though. yeah so here's a couple things so marvel right now the marvels movie is casting to open at only 50 to 70 million it good dollars. looks terrible good which would I make it be happier which would make it the worst box office opening since the hulk movie good i hope it gets it people looks- fired off like it i have anti-interest terrible mm-hmm. looks, i hope it gets people fired it Good. looks really really bad and it comes in the theaters november 10th and i don't think it looks bad because of brie larson i'm a brie larson fan i love brie larson brie larson um, do you think this like the studio execs are like maybe we were right may, maybe but i think it's really just a fact of no one asked for this movie and they're no. giving it to us anyways i don't i don't know and they haven't done a good job making uh uh cap uh miss marvel captain marvel what do they call her captain marvel miss marvel somebody else miss marvel's from Ma- Madam marvel no there's a miss isn't there a miss marvel in there because wasn't there a miss oh marvel? yeah miss marvel is the girl yeah right yeah, yes the younger cap- girl yeah marvel is miss mabel the marvelous miss mazel Mazel, That's what it's Mazel about. We're starring Rachel Brosnahan. Um, so um, where were we even going with this? Oh, I don't think they've done a good job developing her as a character. I um, think they've gotten the lazy as a whole. They have. I'm with Rob. They have. They have. I think they just knew they could put out anything and people would attend for a while. Which is why they're kind of going back. We, You know, there was the news about Daredevil. They fired. Did you hear about the plot for that? Yeah. Yeah. The oh. procedural. Procedural drama and they killed off off screen. Uh, foggy and foggy and karen? karen page yeah which would be terrible because those were the um, like so foggy, such a great supporting character but in case you didn't know uh daredevil reborn was going to come out on disney plus and they this week said they're scrapping the whole idea they're breaking it down and starting fresh well and they actually had episodes recorded and i kevin, didn't know that and kevin feige watched them and said no nah, 
no, we're not doing this. Uh, Ke- Kevin Feige woke up, then yeah. it's got to say something. And then now, now they're going back. They were initially hiring when they created the Marvel TV shows. They were using studio execs to make these shows. Now they've said, that's a bad idea. Let's get the TV people involved because movie people don't translate to TV, and TV people typically don't translate. Yeah, and they didn't have showrunners runner- or anything like that, right? No, so they, they did it to themselves. Um, so there's that news. Then there's some DC news where... <laughs> Aquaman in the Lost Kingdom reportedly had up to 20 scenes cut from the from the movie. Like this movie is going to be a train wreck, I think. Aquaman, not only the Amber Hearst heard news, well, um, but we, it's dead this, on arrival. But at this point, can we believe that Amber Heard like Momoa is drunk on drunk, uh, like and harassing her? Not not hurt, but her scenes being cut. Oh, is gotcha, what I meant. gotcha. Yeah, I don't buy any of that at all. Um, so Aquaman's going to be a train wreck, and now it's now there's reports that Jason Momoa is going to be announced as Lobo um, after Aquaman airs. So it's like this movie is completely dead on arrival. He's a perfect Lobo, though. He is a perfect Lobo, but this movie's dead on arrival. Like, I know. Put it why on, are you releasing it? Put it on HBO Max. I don't understand. This is WB's problem. Why are you releasing this? I'm so We're- sick of all of this. And then uh, there's a rumor that WB is going to be sold to Universal. I saw yeah. that too. Which Throw will, it all away. Which will change things again. I say, burn it all to the I ground. I say, and I hate to say this, five year moratorium on all comic book movies. I don't want. I don't even want comic books made anymore. I want five years off. <laughs> okay. Five years off of. Well, everything. you've just killed a lot of people's jobs. Yeah. I don't, who are you? Insensitive. Don't care. You're a jerk. Stores are going to close. All right. All right. All right. Not the comic books. Mm. You can make you can make comic books. I don't want any more comic book movies. I, I the last what about the, the last Batman two? Th- the what? What about the Batman two? I that those are films. Those are those are actual <laughs> films. And I'm not I'm not joking. Those aren't to me. They're not comic book movies. They're actual. They're thought out actual films that are high yeah. quality. Like the but Dark Knight trilogy. Just, they yeah. just. Happen to be centered around fictional characters sure. that are originate from comic books. You you're not you cannot you will never sell me that the Batman and anything Marvel is doing right now are are even in the same league. Oh, I would agree with that in a heartbeat. Because the last I'm looking at the time, the last five minutes of what you guys were just talking about comic book movies, I I, I it pissed me off so much to hear how much money they're burning, mm-hmm. all these different jobs like this is. And and the, and the the quality of the product that comes out is so low, and this just it, it just speaks it also speaks to the 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 idiocy of the general public. I agree. We're, we're so pathetic, and we're we're so we we can't even think for ourselves. We need all all we need are I want big budget movie in theaters so I can go see Boom Boom. That like that's what that's what we want. I really loved that in the 90s, though. Michael Bay movies were the shit back then. But Michael Bay movies weren't won every six months. That's true. You won that battle. They were won every three I like, years. Six I, months. It's like one every once a season. I like it's the, like I like the boom boom. I mean, yeah, but like, okay, so we just, we saw Mission Impossible over oh, the summer. Different boom boom, sorry. That was a boom boom. And that's a franchise film. Mm-hmm. But that's not, we're not getting six different, and over the next five years, we're not getting seven uh Mission Impossible this, the, friend like break off films and spin off ooh but that's not even a good example because that tanked at the box office but it was entertaining still but it was still a good it, it was, was still, still a good entertaining but, but that tells I, you something I'm, okay I, honestly though i i the uh we can just shove the box office right up its own ass <laughs> i don't i do not care about the box office i'm, I'm with joe 100% because a lot of good movies have been like tanking lately yeah then i don't care what critics have to say yeah, i don't like care black what, adam well, that 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 should have never been made. The only, oh my god, the, I, I'm gonna snap today. The only reason that was made is because The Rock is a stubborn bastard. Yeah, it is. It, it really. Is. I, I, could you imagine being in the in any sort of meeting with The Rock it took over, 10 years over to that? Make. It took like 15 years to make. And over those 15 years, if I was in a Zoom meeting with The Rock, I would want to, I would want to hurl myself out a like a, a, a skyscraper <laughs> window because I guarantee you, every time he he brought it up. What about that Black Adam though? <laughs> Can we make like that is, Black Adam? What is what is his Tremonta or whatever his his vodka or tequila? His tequila is. Oh, um, At the end of it, he's probably like, 
Okay, that's cool. What about that Black Adam though? What where are we at in the? They're they're like, we're message. doing yeah. vi- with this, this is a tequila meeting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I I just I'm so sick of I'm so sick of Hollywood, <laughs> in, in general right now. It's it's been a while since we had a Joe rant. Yeah, uh, we need to stir up some more. It's just. It's pathetic. As a society, we are just we're we're what are lemmings? We're lemmings. We're we're pathetic. We can't even we can't even take in original art anymore. It's got to be some sort of franchise. We got to be familiar with it. Yeah, you yeah. Ha- there has to be some sort of familiarity because well, like, we have to be in our safe space because I can't put myself out on a ledge out on a limb and and introduce myself to something completely new. Well, like to Nick's point about the creator, where he rated it so well, but it bombed at the box office. Mm-hmm. I'd rather I'd rather go see the creator fifty times and see the next one one time see the next fifty Marvel movies. Well, go see the creator because it's really good. And neither, that, like neither, that's and neither one of you have, so you're part of the problem. Uh, no, I also I, don't have a lot of time right now. You're that's also not a problem. big sci-fi movie guy. I that's would love true. to go see it. It's so good. I, I would go see it, but I just gotta find the window of time. Well, I'll take you on a date tonight. Where uh, does it? I'll go. Where does it rank against like um, was it like Ex Machina? Oh, uh, it's not as good as Ex Machina, but it's still pretty good. Ex Machina is great. Yeah. What about Moon? These are some of my my yes, favorite. Yes, I I think it's better than Moon to me. To me, I liked Moon a what lot. About District Nine. Same feel. District Nine still better. District Nine was uh, District Nine is one of the best sci fi movies of all made. time. Have you ever seen District Nine? No. What? Whoa, oh that, my! Have you ever seen, have you ever seen Moon? Yes. District, have you ever seen Ex Machina? Yes. Okay. District right. 9 would be a fun review to do on here one time. Oh, it's so good. It's from 2009. Neil Blomkamp. It was his first one that he did. And it's incredible. It starts off as like a documentary. Mm-hmm. And then it shifts into like an action movie towards the end. I've, I've obviously heard about it and I, I know about it, but... Again, T- tying, it's, hard, it's hard to push me into a sci-fi movie. Tying this into our podcast, you know what gave me big time District Nine vibes was New Caprica. Mm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, very much so. Yes, yes. There's some things in in uh, the creator that remind me of District Nine, though. Absolutely. Okay. All right. So let's. Uh, oh, here's another thing. It's this is sad news. Uh, Bruce Willis is. Oh, I saw that. He's not dead? doing good. No. Oh. Um, so a conversation with one of his friends said, my sense is the first one to three minutes. He knows who I am. He's not totally verbal. He's used to be a reader. He doesn't want, he didn't want anyone to know that. And he's not reading now. All those no language skills are no longer available to him. Ooh, it's uh, this. Yeah. Is this like a Val Kilmer territory? Well, no, he is, is, a is, a. Uh, a, Neuro- me- a like neurological, neurological condition, yeah. Is, yeah. It, is it Alzheimer's or is it? Uh, what was it exactly? Uh, I can't remember what it was called. I mean, it's like a fa- it's like something like aphasia, but not exactly that. Uh, frontotemporal dementia. Okay, frontotemporal. So that, that's, un- that's under the Alzheimer's. I would yeah, say, uh, yeah, you're right. In the ballpark. Yeah, yeah. That's- that's a horror. Those are horrible diseases. But he's only well. How old is he? He's got a bit, late mid sixties, early sixties. Uh, let's yeah, find out. Probably early sixties. Sixty three. He is sixty eight. Oh damn! Oh, he is older than I thought. He, he is a good lot for his old. age. Or yeah. he, did. he did. He did. I'm sure he doesn't look great right no, now. No, I can't imagine he does. Which is just sad to think because I, you know, I've dealt with a lot of people once they've been diagnosed with that, and the decline in in just a couple of years is yeah. shocking. Um, What's the la- what's the last prominent thing Bruce Willis did? Uh, last movie he did, prominent movie because he does a lot. He was doing a lot. He of, did a lot of straight to DVD. Yes, stuff. Yes, he did at the end, which yeah. is fine. I mean, was it, the last movie like big movie? Did Cop Out, Expendables? He did a lot of directive. Wow, I didn't realize how many he did. Oh yeah, he's Bruce Willis is thick in the D, in the glass. Walmart DVD bins. Oh, Glass. Glass was the last thing he did. Oh, we'll never get a sequel to that again. Dang it. I didn't realize how many direct to video he did. Unbreakable sequel? Yeah. yeah. So good. I know oh, I've yeah, talked he's, about it. I've he's heavy and easy. I know yeah. I've talked about it a million times, but have you seen Split? I think I let you, let you the Blu-ray, didn't I? You were going to. You you I, preached it dude, heavily. That, watch that guy's performance. is so fucking good. From 2019 to, to 2023, he was in 29 direct-to-video movies. Nice. Uh, listen. 
cash those checks. You know, and I, mean, I you bet know you they were the, small rolls. You know what? Those are all mostly original ideas. I respect it. Are they're you not Marvel. They're not Marvel movies. Watch them all. I will. I'll go on a Bruce. You know what? I want to go. <laughs> you know how many times I've committed to things on the, to, to ridiculous oh, things on this program and never aware. followed through. So I'm going. I I want to go oh. through every Bruce. How many Bruce? How many? What's his filmography? <coughs> how many credits does he have? Oh my gosh! I couldn't even. I mean, it's a lot. Like here, I'm just going to scroll through. This. So it starts here in 1980. Here we go. Boom! 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 <laughs> Oh, that's not that many. Okay, so what's that? Probably 130 films? Yeah. <laughs> Give or take. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through the Bruce Willis filmography. So speaking of things that, you, that, that uh, you don't follow up on, or you guys are, so that bet with a beer. Yeah, uh, I was still waiting whiskey. on it. Still, oh, it's whiskey? Sorry. It was whatever. I thought, we were gonna, I thought we were going to do like a yeah. Patreon thing. Uh, whatever, guys. Make okay. it happen. Make it happen, Cam. We'll make it happen. Yeah, sure we will. Uh, it's not me. He's got to bring it. It's not me. We have to schedule a. It's supposed to be a, an event. Any other news you want to cover? Or oh, isn't didn't you say Netflix is opening up a store where they're going to burn their money? Yeah, I don't even want to talk about that because I hate them. I hate them and everything they stand for. That was the other thing that you guys mentioned about Disney Plus, like canceling and rewriting and doing all. It's like enough with the burning of the money. Can we can we not just throw it in everybody's just face give it that we? I know. Like, what is Netflix going to open up a branded store for? What? Who? What are they going to? Rumor sell is a, they're going to have hoodies. Um, like, yeah, they're going to have like clothes, but they're also going to have like Squid Games in there that you could. Play. Oh, they're going to be themed oh stuff. Oh my god! Which they're coming out with Stranger a Things. Theme. Stranger Things. Yeah. Yeah, just it'll be to, like a just, Disney store. It's just go to Target or something. I know. If I see somebody with like a red Netflix hoodie, I. I hope they get run over by a car. Oh, I'm totally going to wear a red Netflix hoodie <laughs> next week. Are you going to push them into traffic? Or know. are you going to be the car? Maybe. Okay. It's be a Hulu car. <laughs> <laughs> Amazon Prime! I was Pluto, spun- bitches! I was <laughs> Pluto TV! <laughs> Rob, you got anything you want to add? Uh, no, I can save it. Okay. All right, so let's move on to Battlestar Galactica. We're 30 minutes in, so it's it's about our time. That's a good, that was a good primer for what I'm about to All do. All right, so we got we got two episodes to review, and I'm just going to kind of go through both of them at the same time here. We got the Oath and Blood on the Scales. So Gata helped Zarek jailbreak from Colonial One. It has begun. Um, Zarek uh, gets uh, to Colonial One and meets with the uh, cabinet and says, Hey, look, I am the president now. Um, Kara Thrace notices something is going on and she tries to get confirmation that something's happening, but she's denied anything. Um, there's prominent uh, officers who have mutinied, including Race Tech, Narcho, and Skulls. They take Leodama hostage upon arrival and Galactica. They all need to die. Yeah. He's rescued by Thrace right away and they flee together. Um, and they decide they're going to do whatever it takes to get out. Uh, re- uh, crew members Anders, as well as Carl and Sharon, are taken hostage together with six in the cell. And the CIC, Admiral Adama, and Saul Tai are taken hostage and sent to the brig as well. Adama and, and Tai manage to overwhelm their captors and break free. Uh, Lee and C- Captain Thrace help uh, Rosalind break off the ship uh, with Gaius Baltar. Um, and they actually use Gaius Baltar's wireless transmitter to address the fleet and let them know what's going on. Um, afterwards, they all meet up with Adama and Ty. Together, they make their way to a storage room uh, where uh, Tyrrell is promised to take the Admiral and the President into safety. Uh, Zarek uh, takes control of, of, of the situation, and he's mad because Adama's not dead. Um, so oh, mad. Alone in the storage bay, Baltar and Rosalind come together. They realize that they have a lot more in common than they've ever re- than they ever knew, and they make it off of Galactica. However, um, Gata orders their Raptor destroyed. Ty and Adama make their final stand as the Raptor escapes. So that's how Episode One ends. Um, episode Two begins with uh, Felix and and Tom consolidating their insurrection, while uh, three Kara and Lee are just organizing the resistance and are kicking some major ass along the way uh zarek brings in romo to serve as the uh, uh, the trial lawyer for uh admiral adama's uh trial and uh and and zarek uh, romo's like hey who's gonna be the judge and zarek's like me um (laughs) and he basically declares him guilty right away uh 
Zarek then goes on and tries to get the support of the Quorum of Twelve, and they refuse uh, his support, uh, so he kills all of them. Um, Kira and Lee continue to rescue prisoners, including Hira, Hira and all them, and as they're making their way to get to Admiral Adama to save him from execution, Anders gets shot in the head. Boom. In the neck. It, oh, neck. Yeah, it is, I guess it is the neck, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I think it was like it's low, kind of like I think it's like meat. Yeah, yeah. It's somewhere in the middle. Um, it's only a flesh wound. It's only a flesh wound. Um, so the Cylons all think that uh, Adama's going to be killed, and they're voting to leave. And Lot- Roslyn's like, you better stay. Don't you dare move. No. And, sh- and they're like, yeah. Different scene. Yeah. And oh, then sorry. Zarek, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. And then Zarek calls and says, hey, I want to let you know that uh, we killed Ty and we killed Adama. Surrender. And she says, no, I'll come at you with everything I got. You hear me? I'll come for you. Um, and it's pretty intimidating. It was and a scary. Batman. It was a it was a Batman moment. Yeah, it Talk was dirty like that. Um, uh, and and uh, the the Galactica is ready to jump away. Um, and as they get ready to jump away, Tyrrell has sabotaged the FTL drive. Um, and that's when Gator realizes their mutiny is failing. They've lost. They've lost control of the ship. So he basically stands down. Gator. Uh, um, and and Adama and his men storm the CIC, and the mutineers give up without a fight. Uh, after the CIC is reclaimed, Tyrrell, who's in the engine room, notices a massive crack in the in the wall of the ship, uh, a massive crack. Later, Gata has a conversation with Baltar where he talks about his hopes and dreams, and he wishes people to know who he really was, and Baltar says, I know who you were. Um, as a result of their actions, Adama has Gata and Zarek executed by a firing squad that he commands personally, but moments before executed, Gata's phantom limb pain stops, indicating he's finally at peace. The end. Don't even bring his face up on the screen. <laughs> These are per- invisible by characters. Go Invis- back to that. Invisible what? Oh, right here. Is gay to buy? Yeah, he is gay. Did he kiss they- another guy? What? Might- probably a deleted scene. I think it was a deleted scene, but yeah. Okay, he- I was gonna say I never, I never saw that. He's made to be gay, not bi. I think he's made to be straight up gay. Um, really? Which is that a is that a sexual yeah. preference? Straight up gay. Because if what? it is, that's pretty is that, cool. Is that a play in his name, Gata? <laughs> that's too meta. <laughs> that's too meta. Oh, man. So the, get him off your screen. I don't even want to look oh, at his face. I'm leaving it up the entire time. God. Man. He does play the smug, arrogant a-hole really well, doesn't he? He, he was dipping like his... Like, over the past, like, well, he was dipping 10 his, episodes. Yeah. He switched. Yeah. He, he really dipped his toe in that Sean Penn water. <laughs> he did. He went there was from a, being, There was a period where I... Fucking hated Sean Penn because all he played were assholes on his, in his roles, and he did it so well. I I, I mean, well, he's kind, of, he's kind of a smug, arrogant asshole. I, I wouldn't now. call that acting. I call that being Sean Penn. <laughs> I will say though, I don't like Sean Penn. All right, I don't really. So like we Sean don't Penn like either. we don't like Gata at the end. Obviously, we hate Gata by uh, the end. I hope it gets. I want I want you guys to know that the... I've hated Gata from the from jump. not from the beginning, not from the beginning, not from no, the beginning, right right from the election. Yes. From the election, yes. yes, you turned on him quick, but I, I think Gaeta's story is one of the more compelling arcs of the series. To be from someone incredibly loyal to Adama, incredibly loyal to the fleet, just this green guy who all of a sudden leads a mutiny and takes over everything, and uh, just completely jaded and loses all respect for the admiral. Right, and I love his arc. He gets what he deserves. Period. Yeah, I, I, oh, I. I I've never been so angry watching. I mean, there've been. This is. The, I was so livid watching these two episodes. Like, yeah, I would have liked to watch those with you. I would. Oh my god! I, uh, I actually almost thought about being like, guys, we should watch these ones together because they're pretty intense episodes. Mm-hmm. Um, and I kind of regret that now. We should have. When once we get to sort of like the end scene, yeah, there was there was a little bit of relief once those guns fired. You're like, no, why but, did you fade to black? <laughs> I want no, we'll to just see. get. I mean. Well, I'll just tell the story now. Like I was watching it, like I was watching it last night, waiting for my son to get home from the movies. And my oldest was like, he was downstairs, and he was he was coming up to talk to me every once in a while. And he came upstairs right as that scene was starting to happen. I'm like, don't talk to me right now. I just want to watch this. I'm, I'm like, I was like, it was like my team was winning the Super Bowl. I need to see this. I'm I like, I I need to see this. I'm like, I'm like, do it, do it, kill them, kill these two scumbags yeah. every time. 
I'm like, these these two bums, they're going to get what they deserve. And he's like, what is going on? <laughs> like, why are you? Yeah. You're like, I'm shut like, your I, whore mouth, yeah, kid. I can't, I can't explain it to you right now, but they're going to get, they're going to get their come up and, and I just, I just need to see this. I need to see it. Yeah. And I was hoping that it, it would happen. I, I was, I wasn't sure. I was hoping sure they were about an airlocked, actually. No, I want, I want them fired upon. I, I like the I I like the idea of an airlock because then you could have shown them floating off in space, right? Like, Gata's like I'm at peace, and he was smiling right before he got shot. You could show him like frozen in space, smiling with his... no, because he's, then he's gonna be frozen in peace. I want the last uh, I want the last thing he, he feels is to bullets be a bullet. ripping through him. Yes, okay. I want him torn apart by by gunfire. But they say the way it works with the adrenaline, you don't even feel the initial gunshot. That's what they say, but that's okay. I mean, yeah, what do they know? Yeah. They're alive. I want, I, exactly. I, want that, I want that satisfaction for Adama, too. Well, yeah. I mean, man, Adama has seen some things. Fleet is not doing good, man. The fleet is not doing good at all. So let's start with the first episode, I right? Say, yeah, can we go some kind of linear? Yeah, well, let's start from Tarantino, the beginning. We'll Tarantino, it was the end. Yeah. Now let's go back to the beginning and tell the story. <sighs> so, again, does this, let's start with a, a question from the beginning. Does this insurrection, does this mutiny happen? If Rosalind didn't abdicate her throne and just decide she was over it, no, not no. at least not initially. You still think it happens? It, maybe down the road, but I don't think it happens anytime soon. Because oh, okay, you're saying no, it doesn't happen. Okay, yeah, because yeah, not like this. It's Zarek really manipulating everything. Oh yeah, he takes advantage yeah. of the twelve. He gets yeah. them on his side. The the Ish. quorum. Yeah. Because well, he does it, it first, and right? it's because yeah. she stepped away, and he was able to step in there and like, ah, look at me. Yeah, and I'm but, the president now. Yeah, yeah, and basically, like, well, that, this is what makes me angry about the quorum that they're so easily manipulated. No, they're only doing this to hold on to power. Yeah, because that's what Rosalind's been doing all along, man. Right. There's forty thousand of you left. What power is there truly? Like, who wants to hold on to that power? But that's what Zarek wants. Zarek oh, yeah. is he is wants projecting. The power. Yeah. yeah. He's projecting, and we see that later on in the second episode. Um, is 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 that ever a? Uh, you can just say yes or no. Is it ever addressed? Uh, Rosalind leaving, like abandoning, because I we talked about it last week. I think, and I I think I posed the question: Does does she bear any? What responsibility does she bear for what's I happening can't now? Recall because in the next four because episodes, because clearly this is kind of her fault. I, I mean, don't think it's completely her. I said not, kind of. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think she's. I think she's on the Mount Rushmore to bring it back to our old episodes. The Mount Rushmore of fault. Yeah. At the situation here. Yeah. Nice work. She, she does bear a lot of it, right? Because if she would have just gone to, because it wasn't there even a point where Adama in the previous episode said, "Just go talk to them, please. Yes. Go yeah. talk to them." And, and she, we, I, I think I brought up this behavior many episodes ago when the first time where she was dying yeah where she was saying like uh, i think it was about like the baby yeah like all she would make all these decisions no assuming that she's not going to be around to bear any responsibility for it or see it even play out yeah and she's kind of she was kind of doing the same thing here right she on was, the she opposite was, end of the spectrum, though, she went from "I'm going to make every decision possible because I'm not going to be here." Right, to, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not making any decisions because I'm going to die anyway. Exactly, but it's the it's the same same behavior. Idea. Yeah, same. She just she skirts uh, any responsibility for these mate. Like she, I don't know. I I love her character, and she's she still, messed up. She's still here. great, but this is a this is not a good look for her. But I kind of get it. I, I mean, I get it, right? Like, she spent her whole life, you know, she's dying of cancer, and the only reason she's holding on to power is because she was told she was going to lead them to Earth. Yeah, but she wants to die. It, it's incredibly selfish. Well, what, I don't know. Like, it, well, it, doesn't, it, hasn't she, okay, yes, it is. It is. But oh. hasn't she earned the right to be selfish? This was Adama's and her, their argument back yes, and forth. Yes and no. I mean, everybody has, everybody earns the right to sort of dictate how their lives play out to a certain degree. Mm-hmm. But not everybody is the president of the colonies. You're you're on a different echelon here. You're you you hold responsibility for the 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 livelihood of the the other forty thousand. I get at the beginning when she was, it's irrational thinking in a situation, right? You just got delivered this blow, and you're gonna react to it out of emotion, right? But at some point, she needed to realize that Zarek, Zarek, and he was gonna do something like this. 
Well, this is the problem with her having him as her vice president, right? The whole point of her having him was so she could watch him closely. Well, now she's not around to watch him closely. Right. And that's where he takes advantage of but the like, situation. If we're like, so take, for example, like hot dog. Mm-hmm. Like <laughs> he can he can be if he were dying of cancer, he could be like, you know what? I'm not doing the pilot thing now. I'm just going to I'm just going to chill. Mm-hmm. And it's all, it's like eh, no big deal. You're a pilot. We can replace you. It's it, it you being replaced or you retiring doesn't really mean anything for the colonies. You're hot dog. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He's not the president. When right. you're the president, you can't just be like, "Yeah, I'm good. I'm gonna die." So yeah, I'm it, just gonna, I'm gonna leave this over here. Let it all sort out. Zarek will be fine. That, and, I mean, that's and it almost kept on telling her like, "They need you. We need you." Yeah. And turns out they did. Mm-hmm. When I think Adama brings that up to her and just says, "Just to t- let you let you know, scoreboard." Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm-mm. Not even listening. Me? Yeah. I was listening the whole mm-hmm. time. Have you reached out to Edward James Olmos on M Live? Olmos. Or not M Live? <laughs> Jesus. Uh, IMDb. I did on M Live, but I d- I'll try on IMDb. Oh, you should try him. <laughs> it's worth a shot. Yeah. Who why knows? not? Who knows if what you get? Uh, okay. I'm I'm reaching out to more BSG folk now we got like three weeks yeah we're running out well, of I know, time but, but we can st- we can still interview them afterwards yes I, yes we can we can make very special up so i mean we review jonathan frakes without ever watching the next generation that's true so i mean we can make it happen yeah okay. all right so back to this back uh moving past Rosalind. uh right away we have uh kara realizing something is up and we see kara reinvigorated in a way we haven't seen Kara for in a long time. She thrives under pressure. She wasn't annoyed or annoying at all. No, she, and she was She was not. She was kind not of funny w- when Lee's freaking out and she like grabs him and kisses him and she's like, I feel alive. <laughs> Let's go kill some people. This was the most violent episode or t- like two episodes or whatever yeah. of the whole show. Oh, you see a lot of blood, a lot of I death. loved it when she just came in fu- when they were going to kill Lee. Oh my gosh, she was like she boom, blast the guy. Boom, try me again. And then as she's backing out, she's like, follow me. I dare you. I want you, know, I want you to. I wa- yeah, she did say that. Like some people might question her firing, but I, it's warranted at that point. They're traitors. Who Take would, them who, out. Who would que- I would question that person. I would too. I, I would assume that some people would be like, well, they're your people. You're, there's only 50 No, she said left. they're the end. Remember she, agree, said, no, she, said, she said that to, um, to Adama. Adama. Yeah. Yeah. I would kneecap them all. Yeah, these aren't your people anymore. These they're are the your enemy. enemy. Yeah. yeah. Which is true. Like, how do you come back from that style well, of mutiny? Well, those cats, he, he let, le- like, you know, they let live with uh, when they were captured in the head, yeah. the hands behind their back. Yeah. Sorry. You, and he gone, lets, gone, I can't, gone, I can't gone, trust gone. You. I can't trust you. Bye, Felicia. But it works to his advantage, right? Because there's the one guy who switches sides. Which I love to see, by the way. That was that was that was kind of cool. Like where he's like, oh my gosh, I got in over my head. I can't believe this is going as far as it went. I'm coming Kill, with you. Yeah. Kill that guy too. But he. So maybe he again. Who Have knows ever- the full extent of this mutiny? Probably just Gata and Zarek. And even Gata doesn't even know it all because he doesn't know how far Zarek's willing to go. Um, maybe they thought, okay, we're going to re- lead this mutiny, if you will, and force the Admiral to make better decisions. They uh, Maybe some of them didn't think they were going to force the Admiral out of his position. Maybe they didn't think they were going to kill the Admiral. Or kill the quorum. Or so, kill then the quorum. Yeah. so then they're worthless to me because they don't think. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, yeah. there's They're just going to blindly. Who blindly follows Gata? Who finally who blindly follows our current political structure here in the U.S.? There you yeah, go. Yeah, but I, you, I'm not recruiting them. I wouldn't want them on my. Get rid of all them too. But that's the thing. You want entire- people who will blind, almost blindly follow you and and listen to what you're saying, and that's what Gate has got. But I think what is so fascinating about these two episodes is this isn't a, just a mutiny about what's the right or wrong decision because Gata actually makes a point a little bit later on to Zarek. He's like, we had the truth on our side, which they did. And then once Zarek crosses that line, like they're screwed. They're, they've lost their narrative, what's the, right? What's the truth they the had truth on their is, side? The truth is the Cylons obliterated us. We should not be having an alliance with them. Okay, hold on. That's not that's not all truth. That is one that is one fact and one opinion. Right, but uh, what I'm saying is to the fleet, it, to the rest of the fleet, that is the truth that they believe. That's and their truth. That's that's their truth. Yeah. Okay. And, well, and now that's gone. I hate I hate when people say that's my, my truth, my truth, or their truth. <laughs> well, that's, I don't care. Well, I agree with you. 
I do agree with you on that. But the fact of the matter in this situation, that would be what their truth is in their head. They don't. Okay. They, they don't work I, with I, these silence like all the every, like the Galactica crew. I get it, but like, <laughs> I see your thumb. Do it. Big fracking yeah. deal. <laughs> but the 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 actual truth of the matter is not on their side. It's Agreed. on Adama's side. The truth is they were once the enemies. They did obliterate humans. But that was that was when the stakes were different. Things are different now. Yeah, you're facing true extinction now. Yes. You weren't before. There, I mean Plus you said the wild cards of the other Cylons that are out but there. But historically there have been war yeah. historically there have been wars where an enemy has Become the friend, become a a, a, a become a, a a friend, and it, it's and turned again like World War Two with the Russians and right? like the Dominion yep. War, the Dominion War with the Cardassians, right? Yep. They become their friend, the Romulans, the Romulans, yes, the Cleons, so, yeah. you know. So if they were if they were uh, fans of his, if they were fans of history, they would see that this isn't out of the ordinary. Right, right, yeah, I agree. And every, I mean. If what Gaeta and Zarek were saying were true, why hadn't the Cylons attacked them in... Why hadn't they... For, like, it's why not, hadn't they moved on them? It's not an issue of thinking that the Cylons are going to attack to me, I don't think, to Gaeta and to Zarek. It's an issue of, this is a bridge too far. What's the point of humanity surviving if we're going to work with these a-holes who but try I know to that they're, But they're painting them as the enemy, and the enemy wouldn't just... If they're truly your enemy still, and they see you flailing they're not just going to sit there and let you oh yeah especially rot. during like, this mutiny right they would take advantage of the situation but i'd, I'd argue that it's easy to fear monger these people well yeah because oh, especially right now yeah because they're bums because they're still coming off how many how long has it been since the the colony annihilation a uh, couple years yeah two so, and a half to three or like three years right because they were so on caprica that's for still a year fresh in these people's mm -hmm. minds and they haven't like i said you have a dama who sees the big picture has that been relayed to the common man or, or the, the Tilium ship or, or that. Well, this goes back to Roslyn, right? Yeah. yeah. So Who well, hasn't been talking to them. Where's Roslyn during this though? Could have helped this whole situation. I'm not defending it. Yeah. I think it's idiotic. I think that these people have, you've got to see the FTL drives are important mm -hmm. to put on these ships, but was it relayed or it was a direct order from Adama and Adama's mistake was maybe not spelling it out. He's just following his military militaristic way. But that's where Roslyn wasn't around to help with that. Exactly. Again, Roslyn's fault. Well, I think I think she I think she bears a, a significant portion of the responsibility of what's yeah. happening here. But isn't it her who also? So she bears a, a responsibility in. Oh yeah. This partly. happening, but she also plays a big part in helping the mutiny fail because she's the one who gets on the wireless speaker only when Bill's in danger. Yeah, yeah. but then only her boo thing. Well, even before Bill's in oh, danger, right? Because really? she goes to meet with Gaius, who's trying to get out of there right because yeah. he's like I, I i have to leave it's unsafe for you if they, i'm here they want me to he yeah yeah, yeah. it's got he's, i do like his haircut though he looks, it does look better yeah. he looks good now it looks like right? he's losing weight though he's thinning out in the face i think, I think he a, looks sickly i wonder if it's he intentional. Hit the, he hit the gym i don't know i think he's i think he's burning <laughs> calories another way yeah, if you know hit, what i'm saying he hit, he hit the six. Oh yeah oh yeah yeah uh I so just make you feel good <laughs> This is now the, is not the time for a BJ. <laughs> it's a, it really pains me to say it. <laughs> so Rosalind comes on the is speaker. That, at, is that not is that not what was about to happen? Uh, it was something or a handy or, or something. Oh yeah, in that episode, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. Yeah, I saw the vision of Adama getting shot. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> she was about to get shot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> So, and then you got Tyrol helping the Adama get off the ship, which is the first time we've seen, or not Adama, but the Rosalind get off the ship. This is the first time Tyrol and, and Adama it's, have interacted. It was because you said, remember, the old man doesn't deserve to die like that. No, exactly. Why are you helping? He doesn't deserve to die like that. But that's the first time we've seen them interact since uh, Adama kicked him, basically demoted him, right? Right. Uh, which is kind of cool. So it's a little bit of a redemption for that relationship. I like the the conversation that Roslyn and uh, uh, shoot, why am I, Baltar had right before they're getting rescued, where she's talking about uh, seems like you're 
seems like you shouldn't have trusted your second in command or something like that. And the, and then she turns around and says the same thing. Yeah. It seems like we're having yeah. the same conversation. Seems like we're having, yeah, exactly. Uh, looks like we both screwed up a lot. <laughs> yeah. Who had who had the worst second in command? Oh, Tor- I, uh, I'm gonna go with Roslyn. Uh, no, I think Gata. I think Gata's worse. Gata's way worse. Tori was fine until she decided she wasn't anymore. Yeah, right? She didn't know she was a Cylon until like she's no longer gives a crap about the humans. And she was only second in command, knowing she was a Cylon. What? Oh, for I was a month talking. Or two? I was talking Zarek versus yeah, Zarek. Zarek, her vice president, her VP versus. Oh, oh, do you think that's what he was talking? She, he was talking more about Zarek for her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One hundred percent. I was thinking yeah. Tori. For, why was I thinking Tori? I have no I idea. Know, I have no idea. Then it's absolutely Zarek is the worst second in command. Really? Yeah, because Zarek's always been scheming against her, except for on New Caprica. That's the only and he time. He definitely pushed the envelope a little further than this episode. Uh, yeah. 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 I he mean, did, he, he hasn't done push, what he's doing yet. He That's, didn't push out like Gata did. Okay. So, so we know that. Uh, she gets off the ship. They order the firing onto Raptor and hot dogs out there in his Raptor. Mm-hmm, and he mm, mm, hot, mm, hot dog, mm, hot mm. dog, hot dig. I wish I would have got that. I didn't get it. Hot dog Damn. doesn't fire on them and they escape to uh, the ship. to the base ship. So at that moment, is that where the mutiny officially ends? You think? Because hot, they were hot ordered. Dog save them. Well, no, because it's only one guy at that point. But the reason why I said that's over is because now Rosalind is free to continue talking to the fleet. Yeah, but she hasn't accomplished that yet. The mutiny is still going on. I know, but what I'm saying is, did that one decision basically result point? in the end of the mutiny? Probably, it's probably a good turning point, yeah. Adama keeping on escaping is a good one, too. Yeah, you know. Why do you think, is, is it Hot Dog becoming a new father? That that. I don't think Hot Dog was even in on the mutiny. I think he was just out on patrol when he's, this yeah, all happened. I think he's just following orders, just not really he appreciating what's going on. He yeah. didn't know what was happening. But I mean, and, do, you, do you think, it's, do you think him, him becoming a new father has... Has given him a new perspective on morality maybe and he's life. More and like, no. Maybe he's maybe like, man, I just want to die. <laughs> maybe. I don't know. Uh, but, yeah, he chooses not to. Because I, my assumption was they were always out there on their patrol when the mutiny happened. So they didn't really know what was going on. So here you have Gata barking out these commands. He might just be assuming that at this time Gata's. I think they, they announced that Adama was arrested. Did they to the whole fleet? Didn't they put in the, on the? On I the thought comp? they did. Yeah. Oh, maybe they did. What's Hot Dog doing then? Well, man? well, Hot Dog's probably just like he's all a right. new dad. Well, he's also probably like I don't. He's following the chain of command. All right. So what's going on here? That's weird because he's not firing on Adama. He I, hasn't decided what's going on. He's yeah. deciding what side he's on. But once he's once you saw that they're trying to get him to fire on the president, he's like, man, this doesn't. This ain't right. Hot, this doesn't smell. Doesn't, doesn't pass the smell test. Doesn't smell right. Mm, I'm not smelling those fingers. <laughs> Yikes. Put them in your bum. Yeah. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? All right. So she gets away. Um, she gone. And, and I love how Zarek is all smug and and goes to talk to the quorum, mm. and he's like, "I'm your president. I'm now. your president. Your president commands you." And they're like, "Can you leave?" I like yeah, that. Beat it, goes, punk, Mister Vice President. Yeah. Bitch. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing. It's like Rosalind ain't dead. She's over there. You can't just take over. Like you have to have a vote. You have to. Well, here's the thing too. Those soldiers followed that order to kill the quorum rather easily. Well, that's an extreme. They gotta shoot him. Okay. So this was the point I was gonna make when we got lost on the rabbit hole of Gata. Uh, You know. I'm not done with his ass either. So they. Hmm. So their excuse for this mutiny was over a decision, right? But to me, most of these mutineers have personal vendettas against other characters. Gata has a personal vendetta against Hilo. He has a personal, or not against Hilo, I'm sorry, Anderson. against Anders. Gala has a personal vendetta against Starbuck. Ga- you know, uh, Zarek has a personal vendetta against Adama and against Rosalind. Like, these are really what's in, what's, what's, causing well, all this thought, his personal vendetta is he doesn't have the power yeah well you, you had that one marine who's like remember me like to what, what was it to the chief yeah. at one point or no to no, it was to uh, Hilo. Hilo. to Hilo before, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get with your wife i was on the pegasus when you uh killed my man it's like well bro you just can't go around don't you know don't most villains have some sort of personal vendetta against who they're Right, but the point being, it's like, here's Gata all along thinking they had a just mutiny, but at the root of it, it was already corrupt before it even began. Like you That's, didn't why, have that's people why I took offense when you said ju- they had the truth on their side, because they, they never did. Well, 
Gata thought. And some I don't shape, care what Gata. Th- I don't care if Gata thinks he has I the still truth think on his they, side. They Scumbag. would have. They would have had their truth on their side if Gata consolidated this mutiny more properly. He did not. He, he, they went about it for the wrong reasons. He leaned too much on vendettas and anger and grudges. What to, is to make truth? This happen. Subjective. We've talked about this I know. before. Truth is very subjective. Um, but this is a mutiny bound See, to fail. Tr- truth is subjective. Facts are not. I don't think facts and truth are the same thing. Well, fact. The Cylons nuked most of humanity and killed most of it. Fact. They've been chasing you everywhere. Fact. There's now a, a ship in your fleet. Fact. Now the now the now the uh, Dama's ordering them onto your ship. Okay. Fact, I, these the Cylons join your fleet to help out. But have they seen that? No, yet? no, they haven't. That's the thing. This they don't have all the information. So my, okay. So where's the news? Yeah. All this during this. So do, I wanna, <laughs> if, if this we is, can bring this into real world. And I know that I know a, a lot of this mirrors. Um, like the xenophobia that was happening at the time in the United States mm-hmm. between um, September 11th. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But like, okay, if we, if we take like Russia or North Korea, for example, mm-hmm. are they always going to be what they are? What if it, at some point, they've if been they, consistent for a while. They have, but they've also been under consistent leadership for True. a while. So if that leadership changes or there's a shift in, um, like I, for a bit, lack of a better phrase, like a change of heart. Are they always going to be the enemy, or can could we ever see them as something different? Well, the, you got to go look back in history. So let's look back to the fall of the Soviet hey, Union. Let's think. In the let's 90s. think about the Germans. We view the Germans differently now. Than, I don't trust we them. We view the Japanese differently now. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it took generations. Yeah. It didn't change overnight. Right. And it also took the Germans accepting culpability for their actions. Right. They teach about the Holocaust in schools. They talk about how it was their own fault. They own it. Problem with other nations like a Russia or whatever. It's propaganda there. They don't own their mistakes. North Korea doesn't own what they've done. They, China. China doesn't own what they've done. Right. The United States doesn't own Nike. what we've done. No. Um, so that, I think there's where the difference is. If you own your crap, then we can move forward. Japan owned what they did and they said, crap, we started, uh, uh, deifying a human. And you know, we followed this person like he was a God and we did whatever he said and look where it led us. We can never let that happen again. They owned it. Um, the Cylons aren't exactly there yet. Even. No, because even when they went to retreat to that ship, their 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 first thing was those humans, the humans, the humans. Let's run, let's yeah. run. It's like, dude, you're having a your own civil war, and they came to your defense when you needed to. So now they're having a civil war. Come to their defense, but nope, they want to cut and run. Rod's like, no, no, stay here. I still hate Gata. I think he's wrong. I think his truth is bullshit, and I'm glad he's dead. I I know. I get you. I get you. So uh, some smug face. That smug, clean-shaven face, son of a... I'm glad... For you, those of you who are, don't know him, have a picture of Gita yeah. up on a big-ass monitor for Joe. So do you think Do you think the Cylons originally, are when they're with, with the president, they're like, she's weak. And then when she goes on her rant against uh, uh, Zarek, they're terrified well, of her? Well, the one guy, I can't think of his name right now, Levin, was, well, he was like, I'm into this. Yeah. 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 What was the line she has? She says, uh, I got it right somewhere right here. Where is it? Uh, you got to pull up the audio. Bro. No. Oh, I, do you want me to pull up? I yeah. can't. Yeah. Uh, I, I can I can try to pull it up, but you got you to gotta start talking about something else while I do it. Joe, Gata, go. Uh, I hate him. <laughs> I'm glad he's dead. I I couldn't. I mean, I, I was. You know what? Let me read some of the texts I sent you guys at like 1230 in the morning when I'm read when I'm. I'm watching this. I said, uh, okay, 11.16 p.m. through 12.11. I said, Gate is a scumbag. And then I said, okay, there's going to be some swearing in here. All caps. I said, fucking kill Gata. Foreshadowing. They said, I'm telling you right now, I'm going to rant my ass off about Gata. Uh, Gata is a fucking pussy. He has no balls, fake little bitch. I said, it's all his fault, and I hope he dies a humiliating death. <laughs> And then I and was putting, was all, and I was putting haha to these, and then he responds know. back, laugh it up, Nick. I was legitimately <laughs> pissed off. <laughs> oh gosh, it was pretty good. You kind of sounded like this lady right here. Oh wait, oh wait, hold on. 
It's the whole clip. It's a minute clip. Oh, this is Tom Zarek, president. Fuck Tom Zarek too. Mm-hmm. It's over, Laura. No, it's not. Fall time was killed attempting to escape. Belladonna was tried and found guilty of his crimes. Wrong thing to say, bro. Firing squad executed him this morning. Zarek's a bitch, too. He's a bitch. Fuck Zarek. He's the worst. I hated Zarek more this fleet now as this episode progressed than I did Gata. No. Get it, girl. Not now. Not ever. Do you hear me? I will use every cannon. Gata has a great line in here. Love it. You. I swear. What's an eye to? I'm coming for all of you. It's pretty intense. Oh, so now we have a military leader and a president back on our hands. Right. And that changes this that changes everything. What are right? eye teeth? I don't know, because that is literally her line. Down to my own eye teeth to end you. Google it. I, I was I was the, the legit, I was like, this is really intense. What, what is an eye to? <laughs> Why is it called an eye tooth? They are called canines. Yeah. Your canines canine are your eye tooth. A oh. canine tooth, especially one in the upper jaw. So I'll use every single weapon down to biting you to with, end this. With hate's sake, I spit at thee. Every weapon I have nice. down to my own teeth to end you. That is pretty intense. And I think I think the silence. Does she have a like, background in dental? <laughs> like, <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Does she have a background I think, in I dentistry? I think Lieben was into it. He's like, oh, yeah, girl, get it. I yeah. Don't, I don't know. I don't, uh, maybe they call canines eye teeth. Maybe that's. I've heard the term before. I've, I'd, I'd never I'd, heard the I'd never term heard before. Not in that context. No. Uh, but I think at that point, uh, Rosalind became the president of the Cylons, too. They're yeah. like. Yeah, that, that's she, our bitch right there. And they did, right? They took their ship and they p- parked it right in between and the And then cannons came down. They're like. Didn't she stop treatment? She's got a lot of energy now, right? She's got some energy. She's ready to go. Got her wigs back. She's. she's... Oh, by the way, Gaina had a good quote later uh, in this episode where he said, we had the truth on our side now, now. And then Zarek says, the truth is told by whoever is left standing. That's a good quote because that's the truth, right? Fuck Zarek. I guess. History is written by the victor. Yeah. So truth is what they make of it. That Now, if they win this mutiny, they could say, well, the quorum pulled guns on them and said they want Cylons everywhere. And so we killed no, all of them. I, I think Zarek would spend it to make himself seem so glorious. Well, that's what I'm saying. Zarek went in with one gun, with two bullets, and killed 12 people with those two his bullets. He just teeth at them and yeah. killed them all. To your point of saying that you hated Zarek more in these episodes than Gaeta as it as it gone, I like <laughs> I to me I understand what Zarek is, and he is that character. He what Gaeta's. The look on his face, his smugness, his arrogance. Smug. Yeah, self-righteousness. Self-righteousness. Like, and then to at least Zarek went in till the to end. He mm. he never backed down. He never, like, said, we're not doing... He, Gata backed out like a pussy, like a punk bitch. And he... He really kind of did, right? Once, like, once, it, once he was, like, on... When it was him and Zarek and we're going to do this and everything's going their way... He had this smug arrogance about him, and then as soon as shit got real, he was like, oh, maybe it's you, maybe we're wrong. Do you think like, that's a manner of, okay, so he said we had the truth on our side all along. Do you think maybe at this point he realized, shoot, this was just a grudge, and I'm screwed. It's over. He didn't have the balls to do no, what he I think wanted he, to he's do. He's like, this is an L. We've, we've lost. And. But but this is. But where, he doesn't have the conviction that Zarek yeah. does. Zarek has conviction. But he, does he? Okay, here's where I all argue against you because does 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 Gata go? Crap, we could keep this going. We're probably not going to win, and a lot of people are going to die. Or does? And so maybe we should just declare it a loss right now. Where where Zarek's like, you know what? No, I want power. I'll fight until the last person. And then what? Where's humanity at? They're dead. I want someone with conviction. No, I, I I don't see. I, I don't, want I don't someone th- who can read the room. I don't think he can read the room. Well, I, mean, I think there, I think it got sh- tough, and he backed out like a bitch. That's what I think he did. <laughs> it to, got to be tough, per- and he didn't back down at first. Well, yeah, they they took control. He of the said, fleet. "Oh, it's it's no more if, if you, if, That's enough." If you believe in a cause, if 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 you're willing to, 
if you're willing to Dan Kim will like, bite kneecaps. If you're willing to command a mutiny, we'll be at your front door. You should be committed to that cause. He led the mutiny. He got the mutiny. And then he, he backed took out like a punk when it got when he. I don't think I, go I, to the end. You should be willing to die for that cause. If you're not, then you're you're. I don't need you on my team. Mm. This is where I will side with Zarek a hun- ten times out of ten. I see Zarek had it for all the wrong reasons, though. I know, but he was committed. I know uh, they're both wrong, uh, I know. but Zarek was in it till the end. He was not going to back down. He wanted what he wanted, and it, that and if he was going, I'd rather into, have Gata as my leader. And if I'm in the mutiny, I'd rather have Gata than Zarek as my you'd leader. You'd rather have a leader who was gonna. He's gonna. He's gonna lead you until it gets bad, and he's gonna be like, No, yeah, he's gonna I'm lead done. you until you've lost. They lost. It was over. That's over when you're dead. <laughs> you just want Gata dead. I want him dead, but I, I want him to commit. You, did you to, want to see him die on the CIC? I want to see him like die fighting to the end. Like, no, well, that'll piss no, you be, off more. No, I, if they weren't just gonna if they, if they weren't just gonna pop him off like Starbuck did to that those, then then firing squad is what I no, want. No, like let's say. Oh. <laughs> yes, Rob. I, I wanted to see Adama come into the CIC and pop the other kneecap. Not gonna lie, I was rooting for it the entire yeah. time. Oh, that would have been. That would have been amazing. Many, like, Dan been, Campbell is ass. That, no, that would, seriously, that's like, like Adama would come in, oh, you want to mutiny me? I'm going to take off your other fucking kneecap. Mutant prick. knee? Yeah. <laughs> How about mutant no knees? Yeah. But I'm just saying, man, <laughs> what other slap in the face like Adama would have been like, here's my dick, it's bigger than yours, kneecap. Well, that was, so, so that's a great question. Like, let's say he decides to keep, continue standing his ground and Gata pulls out a gun at Adama and Adama shoots him and ends it there, right? So that's what you wanted to see, Joe? You wanted to see him get shot on the CIC to go down with his cause? If that, Because then now who's going to tell the people no, to stand no, no. down? If I, don't, that's I what, don't think he told them really to stand down other than saying, you know, don't fire. It's over. Yeah, yeah. we're going to jump. Yeah. Yeah. It's not the end. It's the it's the it's their their attitudes at the end. Yeah. Zarek was like, we're not done here. We're can we're gonna continue be- the end, before yeah. they were captured. That was before right. they were captured. Right. Whereas Gata was like, "No, it's over. We lost. Yeah, Let's once, go home." Once a f- a FTL drive went down, he was like, eh, "Yeah, because he did, because he he only knows how to play from ahead." Right. Okay. That, I mean, that can make that makes sense. That makes I hate, sense. I hate him. I just I mean, it would happen in real life. I'm aware of that, but just watching everybody turn on Adama and given the circumstances we've talked about it mm-hmm. and, and having half information and still being bitter from from being annihilated essentially. Mm-hmm. Just everybody just turned on him. It just oof. I think if Earth doesn't happen, this mutiny doesn't happen. Oh, I agree. Because they're on Earth. Yeah, because because now it's like what do we have to live for? Yeah. We were all striving towards a unified goal together. Now what's our goal? They have no goal. Well, yeah, because you got well, everybody with weaker mindsets, so they're yeah. more able to be manipulated absolutely well, that, that tells me then that their mutiny is bullshit anyway because if they were to make it to earth then they'd be fine with they would they would have been fine with oh we're here so you know it's fine that we we sided with the cylons we got to earth everything's yeah. whatever we can just ignore the cylons now There'd anyway still be tension but there wouldn't be this tension yeah, yeah tension and mutiny are are very different are, are things. two different things. That's one thing for Gata to, and Starbuck to chirp at each other in a mess hall. It's another thing for them to pull guns on one another and try to kill each other. I right? think Gata was will just eventually try to do something on Earth as well. Yeah, yeah. At that, well, because he'd already lost his leg, right? Yeah, and he's miserable, and he has to look at Cylons, and he hates them. Well, and again, if Gata doesn't lose his leg, is he like this? Well, because Gata's arguing the entire time. You took them in. You harbored them, and. Bill's like, I didn't harbor them. He's like, look at your XO. Yeah, yeah, right. Where, where was this? Like, normally you'd put these people in the air or Briggs, and he's the second in command of the fleet. So I get, I get where Gata's coming from. It doesn't make him right. I get well, it. it doesn't make him right. Uh, how wanna... about uh, Lee being a badass with the uh, with the. With the grenade. With the grenade, that was funny. Throwing the grenade. I actually enjoyed that scene. I got a good chuckle <laughs> out of it. That was a good scene. Gosh, see, when Lee when Lee and Kara are quipping like that with each other, they're amazing. Yeah. And that's where you can be like, yeah, I get their relationship. Oh. It's when they're fighting yeah. that it doesn't make a lot of sense. And then they make out and sleep together. It's like, oh. that's that's Anders and her. They didn't have time to sleep together, though. Not yeah. this episode, no. Oh, they found time. Quick handies. Especially yeah. with uh, Anders getting popped in the neck head. N- the head? The Ned, to the neck, man. the heck, the neck. Hit like right in the. I think it, it was like, like right here, wasn't it? I think it was like here. I thought it was right here, like on the stem, kind of the brain stem. I don't think so. Well, we'll see. 
I mean, I kind of know because I've seen the whole series. It's just a flesh. Oh, <laughs> dude, I saw I saw the episode too. <laughs> Where did Anders get shot? Uh, looking up. Don't don't look it up because it might give you spoilers. Oh no! Yeah, 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 be careful of that territory. Be careful. Oh. We only got five episodes left, or six, I'm seven episodes he's left. Not, I'm assuming he's not going to die. Did they get him to coddle? Where was Coddle where was during Coddle? all? It's like the yeah. whole time I'm like, where the f- is Coddle? We need Doc Coddle with a gun running around the really? ship. And smoking Honest- a cigarette at the same time. Honestly, pop, 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 pop. Honestly, all you bad. need to do is ask Coddle. I'll, I'll, I'm going wherever Coddle's going. He yeah. has, he's a moral comp- He's a moral center. He's going with Adama every step of the way. Then that's right. Then yeah. that's that's the right and you know, just you thing. You know he is. You know he's Team Adama until he dies. Doc Coddle? Absolutely. Um. We didn't even talk about the fake trial, too, that happened oh, that's with Romo bull- and yeah, everything. That was a joke. Well, that was kind of funny where they're arguing, then right away, Derek's like, guilty! <laughs> like, just didn't even... He knew what he was going to do. Again, It's it was all fake. Yeah, it was all... It was a kangaroo court. It was to make Gata feel better. Right. Gata wanted the trial. Well, he wanted his chance to vent at the present. At, at that's exactly Adama. what it was. He wanted his chance to... Gata came off as a whiny bitch. He did, but Adama came off as the man, like, throwing... <laughs> Throwing the admiral pins yeah, at you're him. You're the admiral like, now. You're, you're the admiral you, you now. You make the decisions. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm not answering your stupid questions, Gato. Gosh, she's amazing. Commander. Gosh, she's so amazing. Oh, and then that final scene with Adama and Rosalind, where they get to see each other again. That was cute. He's like, "What's up, I got, girl?" I got choked up. I did, man. She was. They they have done a really good job with that relationship, setting that up. Oh no, no that's not when I got choked up. I got choked up when. Um, where was it? it was? Oh, I got choked up when Adama took the um, the microphone again and, and announced. Oh, that made, stand made the down. No, well, made the announcement and Rosalind heard his voice again. Oh, and, and she uh, and took and a breath. Yeah, and she realized that he wasn't dead. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Madam President. Up. Yeah, this is the Admiral. I repeat, Galactica is secure. Stand down. Yeah. We <sighs> killed um, those MFers. What else from that episode? What else do you want to talk about related to that? There's a lot going on uh, in this. You know, when they get when they they were getting shot, the um, Zarek and Gata, mm-hmm. I was really kind of thought Zarek would be more of the plead, not pleading. It kind of like, would have been nice to see him begging. Yeah, just like, hey, you guys don't want to do that. You know, something. It, it's like he was more the type that would do that, or at least but, preach, or at least preach. I'm right. I'm right. You're wrong. It, it, it seems I don't think he would have been satisfied getting shot. Well, I think that's the point where he realizes he's completely lost, right? Like, I think there's a point where you re- you are resigned to your fate, and he was. I don't think. See, I just don't think that would be Zarek. I don't know. I, Gata, I'm just sure, Gato would just be like, "All right, whatever, shoot me, yeah. I'm right." But I think Zarek would have done some kind of pleading or justifying or some kind of mm-hmm. something going on. You think you think Zarek is a, is the type to have that villain? Uh, monologue before his death. Well, yeah, not even so much a villain monologue, just some kind of chest puffing or, or something like yeah. anything. I just him being content with what some, was going some on. sort of conversation. Yeah, looking over, looking telling over, getting go, just kind of shrugging his shoulders. Yeah, and, telling eh. you that you killing him is is yeah. it, it it justifies yeah. his actions. And, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it just seemed that was in character for him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because he loved to hear himself talk. The look that he, they both gave each other, like yeah. they were just like, yeah, yeah. It's more like a, yeah. Hey, what are you gonna do? He, we ended up here, huh? Yeah, we tried, we tried, we failed. Uh, oh, I forget. There's some other things too. Uh, Baltar having sex with a with another six. Like he immediately gets on the on the base ship and he's like, hey, and then sleeps with her right away. And then yeah, that's and- where he realizes he's selfish. I think that's one of the first times he realizes how selfish well, he is. The, it was the vision of Adama, wasn't Adama it? Adama yeah. dying, yeah. yeah. And he's like, dude, what did I do? I can't. I ran like a bitch. I'm a dirtbag. Yeah. He's, he's been be- a dirtbag the whole series, and you have you have really tried to, to rein us in and, and sell us. I've the, tried. I've tried. You've tried to sell us I, on I, I like I like his inner battle, right? Where he, there was no inner where battle. Where he thinks no. he's a good person, but he's not. And that's not a battle. That's not a battle. And that's he's realizing delusion. he's a dirtbag. The he, battle is he's between. He's realized it. The ba- there, the, there's, no inner, yeah. there's no inner battle. The battle is between the viewer who sees him as a scumbag and him being like, I'm, I'm righteous. He's never been like, 
he's never had this internal struggle. I'm just saying. I, I mean, I'm, have you ever seen an internal struggle with him? No. I, I have The closest not thing we got to the internal struggle is him going, when waking up from the vision, going, oh, crap. Yeah. So up until this point, there's been zero of it. Well, I disagree. I, I don't All know. Right. I don't know how you can. And his, I mean, and his, I've been, because I'm because I'm smarter than you. And his cult so. isn't a cult. No, it is <laughs> absolutely a cult. Uh, a sex cult. That's a, that's a, that's a cult I can get behind. A couple other things that popped up. Kara says Semper Frack and Fi, which yeah. is kind of funny. Yep. Um, and uh, at the end, with Gata and Baltar talking, uh, Gata talks about at the age of eight, he wanted to become an architect and build restaurants shaped like food. I feel like that's a point of them trying to be like at one point, like Hitler was an art student, like kind of like connect the yeah, dots, like, like gives good a people become bad people and bad people can become yeah. good people. Right. And yeah, it doesn't matter what you want it to be. Then this is what you've become. I like I don't need to hear Gata's idea of a breakfast joint shaped like French toast. <laughs> Shut Isn't up. Isn't that just a typical building because it's a square? Yeah, but you could cut it in like diagonal. Oh, do you cut your tie? Yeah. Do you cut it in diagonal? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it tastes better that way. Oh, yeah, it does. Have you ate at uh, the Hudson Cafe, by the way? No, at Six and Haggerty. No, mm. good. I ate the one downtown. It, it's the same. I know. Yeah, it's the chain. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, it's good. Uh, any, um, <laughs> road trip. Anything mm. else we'd like to talk about related to the oath and uh, blood on the scales? I'm glad they killed them both. <laughs> I know you're very glad. It was very I, satisfying. To it, finally... it was. I thought. I figured you would find these episodes like as you started sure if... bashing Gata earlier on. I'm like, oh, I can't wait till we get to these episodes. Yeah. I would have enjoyed watching it with you. I, I I I was hoping that Adama wasn't going to have one of these like moral high ground well, moments, like he did a few minutes ago with the uh, with the other guys that were holding him cop- captive yeah. about to assassinate yeah. him. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I was hoping I'm like, please just don't have this moral high ground and like capture them and try them and then and then like just fucking kill them, please. And kind of going back a little bit, the guy who was ordered to shoot Adama, I have always respected you, but I hate the Cylons and I can't work. For I can't commander. get past that. So hate's a strong thing, man. It, it'll make you. And that's, what, that's what the genesis of that all is, this. That is a really good point. Yeah, yeah this is the genesis of the, all the counties and and why this this uh, insurrection can take place is hate. Hate is I, powerful. Makes us do crazy things. Like I, I understand. I, I just with that little scene and those few lines he had, I understand his motivations, and somehow I respect him in that moment, even saying like, "I can't do it," like n- not. Yeah. Can't shoot him, but like I can't come over to the other side. You can try me for war cry or whatever yeah. whatever the implications are, like I can't work with the Cylons. I just can't do it. Yeah, I'm not well, gonna kill you, but I'm not gonna help you. Well, either. I think Bill turned to him and saying, Lieutenant, was Bill trying to give him the chance to come help him retake the ship. Yeah. And that's when the guy said, Dude, I've always respected you, but uh I hate them f- motherfuckers. And I get so, that. That makes sense. You, so Ty then Ty raises the gun, right? Yeah. yeah. Doesn't that enforce his view? <laughs> the Cylon pulls the gun. No. See, I don't think Tyler's doing it as a Cylon. Oh, I know. Uh, to the contrary, do you think when when because shooting him is no consequence, right? Him yeah. Ty eliminating him doesn't doesn't he's not going to get tried for the murder. It, you're, it's war. Like, do you yeah. think that man seeing Adama say Ty stand down? Do you think he's trying to convince him like things actually are a little different? We can fix we this. We can do this. It's yeah. just a little well, a I little think, nugget. I think it's also showing you the difference in, in leadership between an Adama and a Zarek, where Zarek will kill anyone who disagrees with him, where mm-hmm. Adama will try to find that middle ground. Um, and that's that's I think that's Adama's way of trying to bring this guy who hates the Cylons on board. Look, I know you hate them, but it can't be black or white. There's got to be. I think gray. I think it was that. I think it was just planting this little yeah, seed. Let's plant like, this okay, seed. maybe down the road there's we can start this. We can start this process now with this little seed, and maybe down the road it blooms into something where you view the Cylons a little differently. Yeah, maybe you always have a little animosity towards them, but you can work with them you can sort of serve with them you can be around them instead yeah. of you like, can hate them but you can live alongside them without doing anything right i think this is a, a really interesting dynamic to bring in the hate because i think that's the problem with our country right now we have politicians 
teaching us to hate the other Absolutely. side. They're encouraging it. They're encouraging hate. They're they're leaning into it. They're saying if you don't hate the other side, then you're a traitor. Yeah. And that is and, and you can see that among the general population. And this is a Tom Zarek, right? You know, like our previous president is Tom Zarek. Yeah. Oh my gosh. He is. I think and to that point I think I didn't think about that. Ooh. I think no you matter no matter which side your viewpoint comes from, I think your uh, the opposing viewpoint is acting in a way that makes it easy to hate them as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like well, you, does, you don't it, you. Well, it goes back it's to not the, like it's not like politicians nowadays have to be incredible salesmen because it just everything that everybody everything everybody's doing is just so infuriating to the opposite side. Well, yeah, it's, you have Laura Bobert Bobert doing what she did in that theater, and. You know, the one side is like, oh, of course she does because she's a dirtbag. And the other side is like, well, at least we're not AOC or at least right. we're not, you know, like there's no there's no rational conversation. And there's no that logic to it. There's mm-hmm. no logic. There's, there's no there's there's no middle ground. There's nope. none. None. It's a dirt. It's, we need it. We need an Adama. Yeah, we do. There's there's cracks in our government and it's falling apart. And there's cracks in the Battlestar Galactica as well. That's my way of segging into that. There's I no, like. There's I like no the, air seeping in though. Okay, if this, is, it was in the inner structure. Okay. Um, I like that scene with him crawling through the ship. By the way, and then when he we get to Kelly, Kelly. Yeah. Yeah. When, yeah. <laughs> when he gets out at that one point, and the one guy's pointing the gun at him, yeah, and they're that laughing. Whole, that whole scene was. I, I told you she'd be trouble. <laughs> and they're laughing, yeah. and then he tells him to get out, which is kind of cool. Which helped, I think, Kelly's journey of going. Man, I I screwed this up, along with the the, the um quorum. Yeah. Along with. Talking to a quote unquote skin job. Yep. You know, Adama's right. Skin job still sounds sort of pornographic. It does. It does. I can't hear it and I'm like, Would oh, you like a- me to give you a skin job after this episode? Sure. Okay. I'll give you a skin job. I'll give you the best skin That's job. That's on Patreon, had. guys. <laughs> <laughs> the- okay, so right now you have to vote. There's an election. Yeah. An erection? You're voting and for Zarek. You have to vote you have to elect your you, the candidates for like presidency are Cisco or Adama. Oh gosh, I want I want a uh, I want a shared administration between the two. You have to vote for one of the two, and I know that we haven't seen the full arc of Adama yet. I'm going with Cisco because Cisco will do the gray areas. Adama will not do gray area. Really? Adama is black or white. Yeah, I you can't say the you alliance don't think working with the-, with the Cylons is a gray area. But he, oh, that's a good point. Gosh, <laughs> I he, think there's he, more. There's, I mean, he won this war in the gray area. I Adama th- is more principled. I think with Cisco, I agree though, with that. I think Cisco can not be militaristic at the same time. Like everything Adama has done to this point has been, he focuses on the military end of it. I think Cisco can do the other end of it as well. He's a bit more diplomatic. Diplomatic, and I think he sees the the bigger picture than just. Cisco is more of a diplomat. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, he could see the bigger picture rather than just the military point of view. Yeah. He saw the Bajoran point of, point of view. He, he he wrestled with it. He was also He's, a religious man. Yeah, he also saw the, the Federation point of view. He also had his own agenda. He also understood he wanted to win the war. I, I think Cisco might be the better rounded leader. The wartime leader. Yeah. A wartime leader, I'm going with Adama. But, uh, but all around leader, I'm going with Cisco. Yeah. I wonder who would win in a fist fight. Uh, Cisco. Cisco. Uh, no, Adama would pound him. I don't know, man. No, that's not true because the chief kicked his butt. Yeah. The boxing episode? Yeah. But I feel like he intentionally lost too. Cisco Adama. fought hordes of Jemadar at the same time. Gosh, you know what He's I just. He's also younger and thinner. You know what I just yeah. realized though? It's like healthier. The chief yeah. and Adama have had an, a beef all along. I forgot about that. They, yeah. They've constantly fought each other. Like literally fought each other. Hmm. Didn't think about that. So, anyways, we got a giant crack in the Battlestar Galactica. Um, and crack is whack. Crack is whack. So, um, I wonder if that'll come into play. In <laughs> <laughs> End one storyline, and oh, here's a, here's another. Oh, by the way, not only are the people falling apart, the ship is literally falling apart. Well, yeah, but that ship's been through a lot. That ship has seen something, and I think they've done a better job, and especially in the last. Like ten episodes of or so. showing the degradation yeah, of, the, think, of the exterior of the ship, and even seeing how dirty the ship looks yeah, inside. I think at one point, I, I was watching an episode ago. Wow, 
that shit's kind of messed up. I think it actually happened from like maybe season to season, or there was like a two episode plot where I'm like, yeah, where they're like, hey, we can show the ship's effed up. It's really, uh, it's the new Caprica arc where it really, like, I remember basically looking they back got increased at that. budget to do that after they, uh, after mm-hmm. it crack, you know, it it dies in the new Caprica and then they jump out and everything. After that episode, the ship looks like hell starting after that because the ships aren't meant to, you know, crash into an atmosphere. They're meant to be in space. Unlike the, the Star Frontier? Trek Enterprise, Starship Enterprise. Oh, well, I mean, well, a couple the Enterprise of... makes sense. Voyagers, where the issue is, landing they... on those struts. Oh, because they can actually repair the Enterprise here yeah, and there. They can. To me, it was it was uh, after they had landed on Earth, and there was like, it was like frack Earth, and it was spray painted all over. I'm like, this yeah. ship looks like shit. And with the well, Enterprise... and it, even like it just looked dirty, like around the door frames. And, oh like, yeah, you could see just... the 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 smut on the wall. And with Not the, smut. Like but... the Starfleet ah. ships, they probably have like. They probably stop two days in space and have someone cleaning off the hauler ship. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Poor Chief O'Brien. So I, I racist. Another reason why I love this show is like the way they uh, the very similar to how the Enterprise is a character, the Battlestar Galactica is a character. Um, and I really appreciate that. I like how they call it the bucket as well. The beast in the bucket. Kinda miss the Pegasus though too. Pegasus was sweet. Remember the guy, the guy was like, remember me from Pegasus? It's like, I yeah, hope, your ship sucked. Yeah. I hope that guy gets shot in the face, too. I don't remember. Yeah, that guy was smug, too. Oh, yeah, kill him. Yeah, That's he, the first thing I said when uh, at the end. I'm like, I wish they would have killed that shoot guy. Shoot his ass, yeah. please. He was His ass, too. Yeah, <laughs> you're just here to scare. Kill him and then shoot him in the ass. But no, the, the other way around. Shoot him in the ass, then kill him. So this goes back, though, all the way to Pegasus, too. Does this mutiny happen if the Pegasus crew isn't integrated? Gonna, in does this movie? mutiny That's happen if point. you don't make us watch this show? Yeah. I That's know. a good point because a lot of these mutineers are probably Pegasus people. They're not Adama loyalists, right? They're I would not. have to assume that the. Lot I would of have them... to assume as well. Yeah, yeah. I forgot all about that until you yeah. just brought That's that up. Good... I did too. That's a very yeah. good point. Uh, so I wonder if it happens. Damn it, Nick had a good point. Well, because rem- remember the, your bingo boards. The out. Battlestar Galactica was a skeleton <laughs> crew, right? They were skeleton crew because it was a museum. I ship. say turn them back into skeletons, and then it, and then they integrate the whole crew of Pegasus, which was damn it. How did I miss that? Was kind of rot- rotten <sighs> to the core. Because yeah. it's funny because I was watch when I was watching I was like, these guys don't look familiar. Who are these people? And they, well, like, why would they turn and so never easily. It never hit me? No, God damn it! Nick. That's a very good point. Son of a, I hate admitting when you make a good point. Oh. It's one of the worst feelings and in the world. Especially, w- and especially when it's a really good point. I know. Sorry. Oh. Sorry. So, anyways, yeah, but, I feel, I yeah, feel but, better about these mutineers now. <laughs> if Pegasus wasn't there, the mutiny doesn't happen. I don't think. Yeah, but what's gonna happen? Yeah, but. But then they're dead because the Pegasus wasn't yeah, they, there. They would have been dead long ago, and yeah. then yeah, there would be more. Survived. There'd the be pe- more rapes and killings and yeah. prisoner mismanagement. And mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. how many XOs do you think they would have gone through in the in the <laughs> They'd be on year, like, yeah. eighteen months or whatever? They'd be like two people left on the ship in the CXO. I and... Do appreciate they brought back that engineer from the Pegasus? Oh and, yeah, they and then, killed him. And then they offed him. Zarek killed. killed him. That's the yeah. very first kill of the mutiny, yeah. wasn't it? It was. Good old hammer to the face. Or Zarek, French. you dirt bag. You could have just tied this guy up. No, because uh. he, no, that's too obvious. And then that soldier had to be a Pegasus motherfucker. Because no, he wasn't. Because he said oh, that guy's been kissing Adama's butt since he got on the ship. Right. Yeah, but, but, that's, but he was since, since he got on the, from Pegasus. From I hope, Pegasus. I, I hope that soldier was from Pegasus. That's what I'm telling myself from now on. Yeah, all these mutineers, all the were, mutineers were from Pegasus. Pegasus. Let's look at it that way. Minus Gata. Only Gata. Yeah. And maybe Gata. And, and what's the chick's name? That uh, uh, Nacho. Uh, uh, what was her Nacho name? Nacho Cheese. Well, it was the, Nacho. Guy was, the guy was Xander's, too. Screw all of them, man. Why is the guy's name Nacho? Nacho. It's called Nacho. Not Racetrack. 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 And Racetrack's been there since the beginning. She's yeah. been a bit character, but she's. But she's. Shoot her ha- in the face, too. Make me hot dog, nachos. Actually, she was introduced in Cobol's Last Gleaming. She was one who was on the planet with uh, the chief and everything when they were roaming the forest trying to get yeah. off. And she was a good character, <laughs> but now she's dead to us. They're all dead to me. She's dead to me now. Gate uh, is gone, and I'm I'm thrilled. Yeah. Yeah. So I will say I still I, want Baltar dead. To me, well, 
let's get past reviews first. So let's rate these episodes, gentlemen. Mm-hmm. Are we going to rate them together? Or how do you it's up to you how you want to rate separately. them. I'm going to do them separately. I thought one was better than the other. I'm going to do them together. I don't, of course you would. I don't necessarily think it's like bad. Only because I'm gonna get, I would give them both the same anyway. All right, so we're going to start with us giving both of our reviews. Mm-hmm. And then you can give yours there. So do you. uh, uh, So the oath to me is sets the groundwork doesn't really hit doesn't really uh, get as intense as I want it to get. But that saves the what? What? The oath? The beginning? I think blood on the scales is the more intense episode. Oh, see, I give the that's why I'm doing them together. I think they're I I, think they have a shared intensity. uh, No, I think I think there's a not a drastic, but there's a difference between the two. Oh, okay. So I give the oath a nine. Okay. what do you give the oath? I was going to go with a nine. Okay. You were? Yeah. Okay. And then blood on the scales, you're going to give it a, a little bit lower. Yeah. What are, what are you giving it? Uh, I'm going to go with eight, five right now. Okay. Because there's things that, that distract me from the story. Like the, the couple of the, Zer- like a couple of the inconsistencies that I thought. Okay. Zarek, I thought, I really thought that Zarek put him over a fight. I thought just, I had it down in my head yesterday because I was watching it last night, but. Give me a few minutes. Maybe I can remember what the wrong points were. Okay. Be. Okay. But, well, yeah. Th- yeah. Okay. But I thought there was a step down from this one. Although I'll tell you what, because originally I had like an eight in my head, but mm-hmm. like Rosalind's speeches, yeah, brought them back up. <laughs> mm-hmm. Rosalind's pretty intense. Yeah. And again, Edward James, is phenomenal. Again. I do also love that fine. Say what you will about Gata, but they did a good job showing him constantly rubbing the rubbing the stub. I do that all the time. And you guys yell yeah. at me. And then at the very end, he's I never like, yell at you. and at the very end, him being like, well, oh. it's usually your stub at the very end, him being like, it doesn't hurt anymore. Well, it was kind of a cool, it was a c- good conclusion. Don't to that sympathize story. with him. I'm not sympathizing. But it shows that collaborator. He was at, mm-hmm. It kind of shows that he wanted to die, though, to me. Well, then don't kill him. I, whatever he wants, do the opposite. Do the, um, I think that's what it shows to me. Make him work it, on the shit ship. It wasn't that he was at peace. It's. Well, it was that he was at peace because he's going to die. He doesn't have to live. I'm telling you, kneecap him. Okay. (laughs) Joe, what do you give these two episodes? I give both of these episodes a 10. A 10. The perfect score. It's hard to get a 10 Uh, out of me. I I know what it is. I could could not really. I would have to nitpick to find flaws in these episodes. They are very good episodes. Start to finish, I thought it held its intensity. I, I don't think it. I don't think the intensity ever dipped below the baseline where it started, and it started pretty intense. Oh, it these did. are these are pretty anxious episodes the whole way. I like thought they given the first one nine five, and I might go there. I might have a revisionist history. Okay, on that. okay. The intensity, the anxiety I felt, the anger, anger, I, anger. I, the first episode got me angry. When I was. Like, I mean, I was very well, angry especially how these. uppity Gata was about everything. Mm-hmm. Well, how and easy like, it was to do in the long run. Yeah, he took command of the CIC very easily. Yeah. That was a little. I, a, I was uh, even emotional mm-hmm. when when they read when when Adama read when they took him back. Um, I don't think even even the other than Gata, who I Gata and Zarek, who I hate, like Starbuck was. Uh, I thought she was did one of her better episodes. It probably was her best episode. Yeah, Lee. I thought I thought Lee was great. Lee Every, was, everything yeah. was really well done. Like it was nice to see Lee back. To form. Lee kicking butt in a suit, <laughs> just walking around, John knowing Lake. people. Down. Headshot, headshot. I like, I like the scene where uh, when they were going to kill Lee, and and Starbuck comes in and blows the guy's head off, and all the blood splats on his, oh, on his yeah. shirt. Yeah, I was like, oh shit. Yeah, it was. Are... I mean, in, incredibly violent episodes too. Incredibly brutal. Violent. Yeah, yeah. Goodness great. I shouldn't kill more people in that scene. To be honest, I want to yeah. kill one more. Just be uh, yeah. like, you know what? Follow me. Boom. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Let me Why? show you how serious I am. Yeah. The one guy that she shot in like the arm, I should shot, just shot shoot him in the head. Bad aim. Yeah. Oh, that, I head shots was, are hard to do, man. I think that was an ish, a aim issue. Uh, no, it wasn't. She just did one. <laughs> you know what we didn't even talk about is the whole setup to how Gata slowly took over the ship. I thought that was really well. That was a done nice build. Too. That was a nice build. That was a really, and then people were calling to talk to the Adama, and they're like, "Oh, he's indisposed. Sorry." Yeah, like it shows you how much power the person in charge of communication really has in that ship. Mm-hmm. Well done by Gata at that point. Well, her wouldn't have done Don't that. Don't you and dare taking over the ship. He did a good job taking over that ship. He just did not do a good job maintaining with it. Just Pegasus traders. Yeah, yeah, with only Pegasus trainers. Only, <laughs> except for the chick you said, the pilot. So these, I think these episodes. Actually, I think I'm. I gotta. I gotta go back a little bit. I gotta go nine five oh, for well, each episode. Well, well. I do gotta go back. I have to because these are near. Uh, these are near perfect episodes to me. Um, 
I love these episodes. You know, it, I'm gonna give the first one nine five. Okay, all right. And I don't know if because mm-hmm. I it, it completely got me. Then yeah. you got to give the next one a nine. No, not yet. <laughs> not yet. No, I got to think about that. I can't. I can't believe that the second episode is a full po- a full point. This one captivated lower. me more. The first one captivated me more than the second one did. Do you? Th- and you can hold my attention for longer. That's definitely a higher rating to me. Do you yeah. think one of the reasons why these episodes hit so hard is because the previous episode was so so much of like a kind of a slog show? Like, no, I think they're quality episodes. That's yeah. not yeah. take away the credit. Still quality. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Okay. Cool. So now we only have seven episodes left. No Exit and Deadlock are our next episodes. Someone to watch over me in Island in the Stream of Stars, and then Daybreak Part 1 through 3 is what we got after that. Is it really called Islands in the Stream? Island in, the, in a Stream of Stars. Yep. Island did in the Stream of Stars. Uh, these next episodes, reviews are kind of all over the place. Some are highly reviewed, some are not. Um, oh, don't lead the witness. I'm not going to lead the witness. We'll, we'll see what you think. Um, but of course yeah. we will. We, it's our podcast. <laughs> We're nearing the end. <laughs> You don't get the opinion next week. And it's been oh. a journey. It's been a journey. And I've enjoyed this journey with y'all. I have a you, feeling shit's even going to get even more real in the next You know what's funny, though, is seven. BSG fans actually rate the fourth season one of the lower seasons. And See, this, we have by far rated it the best This is by far season. the best season. By would, Yeah, by a, by a country mile. This season is. three. I mean, Joe's giving them nines instead of eight fives. We all... <laughs> we I've all, given tens out like they're... Halloween candy. All of us collectively did not love season three, really. Um, but the beginning of season three was high, like Occupation, Exodus, like those. Yeah, episodes. when the ship, the ship dropped on the. But then yeah. after they were gone, it just kind of dropped. I mean, then we had the one episode where Rob gave it a two. <laughs> the boxing episode. <laughs> that was so bad. That boxing and, and why did you give it a two? Because I wanted to deduce on it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, but yeah. So there we go. I saw the picture. Oh, Rob gave season two a 6.21 out of out of 10. Oof. Season three, 6.4. Season four for him is a 7.93. I mean, it's, I agree. It's, it's, and it benefits from a shorter, from the shorter seasons, I think, too, Mm -hmm. in the long run. Yeah. I I will say because of the, was it the writer's strike, right? Yeah. It does feel like it is a continual season, but it does feel like two shorter seasons. Agreed. And and yeah. I th- I think it benefits from that hugely. It does because I think those tighter storylines. The first half I thought they did really well, and the second half they're they're executing really well. Yeah, <laughs> executing. <laughs> they did execute really well in this. They did. But can we get Ron Moore back in the Star Trek universe? Paramount Plus, are you listening? Would you want Ron Moore back? It'd be a darker Star Trek. It depends. It's fine. I I'm okay with that. Like Everything is a Section Thirty One show, or I would want to. I would love a Section. Can you imagine show. what a Ron Moore Star Trek Voyager would have looked like now after seeing Battlestar Galactica? Well, I don't think it ever got gone to that because he still loves the franchise. No, I know, but I'm what I'm saying is how different Vo- in a good way, like yeah. more serialized storytelling, damage to the ship that carries over, yeah, repercussions, yeah, exactly, in- internally, the Maquis and and the Starfleet crew not getting along the whole time. I would love a Maquis show. That was what Voyager was supposed to kind of be. Yeah, it's supposed to be a lot of internal because conflict. Because Voyager starts off like where the ship is chasing a Maquis ship. And then something happens where the Maquis ship and Voyager are sucked into a different quadrant. And they have to band together on the Voyager. So like the captain of the Maquis ship becomes the, the second in command of the Voyager. And, and the whole rem- point was they were supposed to have tension all along. And it never like happened. Like the Maquis and the Dominion War, Cardassian. Did they, was that ever di- di- discussed... During the run of Next Generation, were there episodes? No, no. Yeah, there, there was Maquis episodes, but not Maquis was set up for they, Voyager, for yeah, because and for DS. Do you guys remember the DS Nine used it a couple Voyager. weeks ago when I realized that the BBC America? Were you watching it all this week, by the way? No, I I didn't see. I I don't I catch it every whenever I can. What was on? I'm not just wondering if you watch more BBC. TV. Oh, I do. Whenever yeah. I, on the BBC, I I will say this. It's. When every other, I watch more every other week because when I have my kids, I have to get them up for school. I get up and I get up and turn on the TV and it's it's f them kids. Watch Star Trek. I'm not waking up at six thirty if I don't have to. Oh, I agree. Don't don't do it. I already been up for a few hours. But one of the one of the uh, one of the next generation episodes I think was like mentioning. Yeah, it's uh, Homefront or first something rather. Yeah, but the, it's a whole thing with Roel Aaron. Okay. All right. Yeah, so 
they piggybacked on a t- the, the what, D- Maquis was created in DS9 for setting up Voyager, and then it made sense for the TNG to kind of piggyback on that to the crew members. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this has been a fun episode. This has been a depressing episode More and great episode all at the same time. Uh, but follow us on, on X, the cesspool that is X. Don't. <laughs> Joe has abandoned X. I, I think. have. Yeah, I abandoned X like two years ago. I, I still, I still. It was, it was you around still the time. Know when a new episode comes out on X, we let you know. Yes. Um, I still, still like inter- I still interact. I've been interacting with Trisha Helfner on there. I've been chatting back and forth with her. Did you invite her on the show? I've tried. Did you? I, I'm if working. It goes there. back I'm to Twitter there. and Elon you, Musk. You were going to Sadiqa Fadel as well, and it never happened. It never happened. I'm sorry. I that was. Your I didn't follow-ups. know the person well I enough had, to. I had better luck with with. Sid I, than you did. I know you did. But did he get on the show? No, he didn't. But it wasn't a no. It was more like a, yeah, well, we can address this later type of thing, which I should follow up. Are we, December 2nd, going to Columbus Comic Con? I am. I think I am, too. I'm going to go. What? Yeah, I think I am. Think about it. Check my. Sh- let me check but my. We're gonna, sh- that's a show meeting. I want to announce it to the people listening in case they live in Ohio. Oh, yeah. We're going to be. The- we <gasps> might- <gasps> Annette. I, mean, I know it's kind of a hike for you, Annette, but like, come on down. But you don't look at the guest list. I know, look but it's Columbus. At, look at the guest list. Look at the guest list. Ha- look at the guest list. I'm, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to cosplay as the people attending to ET at the end of it, so I can wear a hazmat suit because that's what I'm going to need to wear to go, go into, Columbus. into Columbus. Well, I agree. I agree. But look at the guest list. Yeah, it's legit. All right, you said it's uh, it's twelve deuce. Yeah, December second. Let me look at my schedule. We might leave after Mariah Carey on the Friday night. I don't have my kids. And I, I can't go. Fr- uh, I can go Friday night, too, because I have something Friday night, but I just got to be back by Sunday. So it would just be like a Friday and a Saturday, and then we're coming back Saturday We night. come after the con on Saturday. We yeah. have how many drivers? Yeah. It's- so we're, we're just going to go for the day. It's a day trip to. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to petition to go Friday night after my concert. Just drive right after the concert and go up there because we will have so many different drivers. But yeah, let's do it. Keeping the Cardassians goes to Galaxy Con, I think it's called. Mm-hmm. It's called Shit State Con. Yeah, exactly. It's gonna smell like poop when we get there. But sorry, Nat. You cannot. Can't. Well, you can't wear any Michigan stuff though. Oh, I'm gonna have to figure out stuff for my license plate. I know. Because <laughs> that's still football season. December. Well, that's the end of. It'll uh, be. It'll be over. But no, yeah. well, not over. But. How terrible would it be if it's actually the weekend of the Michigan Ohio State game? It's not. It, the it's look that up. Actually, we might need a. We might need something. I think it's the weekend before. Oh, that's even worse. Oh, I'm Patreon guys, you can follow us on Patreon. We got follow little, us on Patreon. We got a some lot of content. You can sign up and uh, no, support it is, the show. It is the weekend before. It's November twenty fifth. <sighs> that's good. Well, but, anyways, folks. Yeah, Patreon. Um, we all kinds of different content not related to what we do on here. It's also it's often just inappropriate and goes wild or from there. Or fun. Or fun. Yeah. Learning experience. Or there's some videos we put on there. Mm-hmm. We're also on Instagram at keeping underscore up underscore Cardassians, where there's a lot of nonsense on there. We're on Facebook. You don't care. YouTube, we don't care. Yeah. YouTube. You can see our pretty faces, especially uh-huh. Joe's mm-hmm. and Nick's. All right. We love y'all. Bye. Oh, it's your secret catchphrase. <laughs> See y'all. <laughs>